the people of the world the message a voice crying in the wilderness of the world are you there in the let all the nation every tribe all the people in the world worship God in holiness let all on every tribe, all the people in the world worship God in righteousness. Voice of forevermore, voice of forevermore, voice of forevermore is now far from. The Lord will serve answers, praise us. Holy Jesus, answer. He has answered prayer. Jesus has answered prayer. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for answering the prayers of your children by opening their eyes to know the truth that will set them free. Thank you for this period also. It's an answer to prayer for me to have opportunity to let your children know the truth. Thank you, Father. Be with us as we relate together. In Jesus' name, we pray. God is a God of standard. So I'm going to talk about of standard dressing of true and holy be Before we go into that, we just want to have a little time to sing and worship the Lord. Rise up upon your feet. Lord, teach us your word, teach us, my God. I want to know your word. I want to practice it, my God. Lord, 
Lord, teach me your word, my God. I want to do your word. I want eternal life. My God. God, I want to know your way. God, teach me your way. God, teach me your way. I want to know your way. I want to know your way. I want to follow it, Lord. My God. I want to follow you. I want to go to heaven. I pray. God, teach me your will me the truth God teach me the truth I want to know your truth God teach me your truth God teach me your truth I want to know your truth Jesus hear me I want to do your truth my God Lord I pray to you I am weeping Lord the truth God has a standard of dressing. He wants us to implore, to use, to please him by. The world being under Satan have their own fashion, life, style, to live and so dress as the devil wants. Look at it in the book of Ephesians. Chapter 2 verse 1 to verse 3. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 1 to verse 3. And you had he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins. You were a dead man lying inside sin. Sin covered you. You were lying there as a dead man. But God came and woke you up and removed you from the water of sin so that your body is dry now from all kinds of sin. Your body is dry. Wherein in time past, you walked according to the course of this world. As a sinner lying buried by the water of sin, you were living according to the pattern of this sinful world. Your dressing was according to the pattern of this sinful world. 
according to the prince of the power of the air. Your dressing, your lifestyle was after Satan. According to the prince of the power of the air, which is Satan. Satan designed your lifestyle. You were following it. Satan designed your dressing. You were following it. As a sinner. Yes. According to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now walketh in the children of disobedience. The spirit that is now walking in the children of disobedience. Sinners are still living in that way up to now, under the power of Satan. Sinners are still living in that way up to now, under the power of Satan. Among whom also we all had our conversation in times past, in the loss of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. Among these sinners, we lived also, we were sinners like them, and we were living in according to what we wanted what our heart dictates to us in fact what we will make us proud what will satisfy our desire you go to see the ladies women in short skirt that is what is in their mind it satisfies them when everybody looks at them look everybody looks at them even if you look and say even if you are crying it this gives them joy because they do what they like. It appeals to them. Satan designed that for them. Exposing themselves is the way Satan designed. And they like it. Their flesh wants it. It gives them pride. To them, it shows how smart, how beautiful they are. To them, it's the best way to pull men so they can make money in immorality. Is the best way to separate marriages and get at them. Is the best way their charms will work because somebody's attention must come to her before the charm will work. So they like it. This is how they want it. And the Bible says, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. Those people are waiting for divine judgment. So we too were people waiting for divine judgment. We too. We were in the world. Sinning like them. We were people waiting for divine judgment. All that have died have entered into judgment. Death had not come. That is why you are. They are peaceful there. Making their money. Making their name. Yes, but the Bible says, for verse 8, For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. But the mercy of God came to you, and as you believed the gospel, power came and removed you from the waters of sin. Until now, your body is dry. Sin is removed from your life. So that is what the scripture is saying. So, this is the dressing of the world. But, of course, you may come out of the body of water, but there are still some particles of water in your body that are hiding somewhere in your armpit, in your thigh, hiding somewhere, somewhere, somewhere. So, this evil dressing might still find a place in your life, although you have come out of sin. But not really full sin, because you still have these particles there, as I said. 
And what said the Lord? You have changed, but not completely. You have changed in dressing, but not completely. There still remains in your life. So what is God saying? Second Corinthians chapter 2. I mean chapter 7 rather. I read verse 1. Second Corinthians chapter 7 verse 1. Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh. Your dressing still has problem. And the filthy person will still not make heaven. Your born again needs thorough perfection to go to heaven. The waters of sin, the stain of this water is still found in your body. You must use towel for thorough cleansing. Use towel to dry up everything. You must change completely to come to the standard of flesh and spirit. Some say, are we, is God only concerned of the dressing? No, inside you too. Put on humility, the image of Christ, the gentleness of life, holiness of heart. As you put Oh, as you drive away, cleanse away the filthy clothing, put on the good clothing, both of the physical and the inside. Paul was pleading with the, the, the believers. He said, in chapter 12 of Romans, verse 1 and 2, I perfect this thing. That ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Your physical body presented to God. Please, let make it a living sacrifice. Sacrifice. Why? Because they were pledges to you. You have some clothes that cost you much to have them, but you will sacrifice them. You have some jewels, jewelry, that cost you so much to, to have them, but you must sacrifice them. Don't go and sell them. Don't go and sell them. They are snakes and scorpions. Don't go about selling scorpions and snakes. They are evil. They would do harm to human beings. Do sacrifice. Do away with them. Don't give them to another person. Where must you destroy another person? Where are you destroying your sister? Do you want to destroy your neighbor? Do you want to destroy your friend? Are you adding sin to sin by giving it to an unbeliever? And if you don't want to give me, will you add sin to sin? Do sacrifice. Those cloth you are putting on, remove them and burn them. Remove them. But in case it will size the body of another person that will make it not too slim again, not too short, it can be amended. Fine. That's wisdom. But for the jewelry, destroy them. If you can amend the cloth and it will be real, it will be good, back for yourself or for another person. Is wisdom, but it must qualify. It must meet standard of God. So, he said, which is, he said in that, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God. Do you know your body will not be acceptable unto God except it is holy? Let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh. Do you know if you have any of these things we know to be filthy in your body, God will not accept that body? Perfecting holiness 
in this fear of in the fear of God. Who told you to be assuming? What if your assumptions are wrong? Your assumptions are not correct. Who told you to be relying on the counsel of sinners? Blessed is the man that standeth not in the counsel of sinners. Who said, no, what is wrong here? Leave them, the way you think. That's the counsel of sinner. Why are you standing on the counsel of sinner? Or sit on the seat of the scornful that scorn at the word of God. And say, ah, leave them, ah, they are taking it too much. They don't want to give people freedom. And you're sitting with them. Blessed is the man, the woman, that sitted not at the seat in, or in the seat of the scornful. No, stand it in the way of sinners. That's what the word of God is telling us. So, perfect holiness. Who has told you that somebody with earring has made heaven? Let him call the name of that person. From the beginning of creation to this time, call me the name of the person who used jewelry and has gone to heaven. Through all the Bible you won't find. And through this generation you will not find. Say, ah, then everybody is going to hell. How many perish in the days of Noah? Everybody, except eight. But now there are more than eight that are not using jewelry. There are more than a million on earth that are not using jewelry. So what are you thinking? Is God going after multitude? Or the standard of his world? So, take the standard of his word. Christianity in this present time is very unfortunate. Is it not ignorant people that, like you that go to start churches? And build up church and say it's my church and does whatever he wants in that place. Teaches whatever he wants in that place. Suppose you with this ignorance go to start a church. How do you think the church will look like? Will the church come to perfection? How can they preach unless they be sent by God? So this is the churches that are, these are the churches that are in the world today. People who say they are delivered from satanic kingdom. You have been in satanic kingdom. You have not been in God's kingdom. Instead of learning the new kingdom you have coming now, learning to come into it now, learning to know about it, you go to start church. Your church will be one-sided. How to expose Satan, but not how to expose God. Not how to expo expose the word of God. Expound on the word of God. You won't know it. Because you spend your time more with Satan. You came out of these churches that don't know God, that are not preaching righteousness. You came and said, oh, I found Jesus. And you're, instead of learning under ministers of truth and righteousness, you say, God has called me. Called you to go and do what? Called you from the Lord's chosen. To go and start a church. You spend all your time from these churches, the Lord said they are demonic churches. Came, you came from uh, living faith. You are going to start church. What have they taught? Do they know holiness there? Then which church are you going to start? When you spend all your life right inside you, alcohol is smelling inside your heart, smelling in your body, smelling in your nose, in your ears, all smells, rottenness, and you're going to start church. Have you taken time to praise out all those rotten smells by being in a righteous church? Or you think that God calls anyhow? So, you go and you do what seems, and you're, since you don't have strength, Satan will take over. That's why it is, the things are happening like that there. That's why you see worldliness and everything. Some of these pastors, they're not strong, and their wives took over. And women don't have a strong heart. Satan loves to have a woman who will be forward because God has made the woman to subject to be subject to man. Be subject to your husband. Satan knows how to manipulate you. Satan. And these women have taken over their husbands. Before you know it, they start crying. It's very zealous. The man's heart is broken like Adam. Move. They have gone to Satan. That is what is happening. So this world is lying in doom. 
in ignorance, in wickedness and backsliding. Yes. Now, they wear every kind of thing they want to wear. I'm going to list out the condemned property which you must not use to make yourself godly acceptable, to make your body acceptable unto God. And my sheep hear my voice and I know them. Yes. Ungodly dressing among the sinners and ignorant Christians include the use of earrings. Since this is an emphasis, I have written a book on this external dressing. More, I think about beyond 200 pages. And detail. Get the book on adornment. Because the scriptures are there. If I'm to say, let's go to scripture, let's go to scripture. The list I have here, I won't be able to exhaust it. But I'm going far. Follow me. Amen. I'm taking you far. I'm taking you deep. I'm taking you wide. I'm taking you high. Remember our song, I'm growing higher. I'm growing deeper. I'm growing high again. <laughs> so, earrings. Rings. Chains, necklaces, bracelets, pearls, gold, all these items of decoration. They call them items of ornamentation to make yourself beautiful. The Lord said, Remove them. My beauty is of the heart. Look at it in First Peter. Chapter 3. First Peter chapter 3. I read from verse First Peter chapter 3. Let me read from verse 1 quickly. To verse 5. Likewise, ye wives, be in subjection to your own husbands, that if any obey not the world, they also may without the world be won by the conversation of the wives. Wives, obey your husbands. Some of them are unbelievers, stubborn, rude, hateful hating people, even their wives. But by watching your lifestyle, they may be won over to God. While they behold your chest conversation, clean conversation, pure lifestyle, coupled with respect, with fear, respect your husband. Who's adorning? Let it not be that outward adorning of plating the hair. Plating the hair here it's not the normal weaving you do or tying with rope. It is the stylish, worldly fashion according to the fashion of this world, according to the design of Satan. The type harlots will employ, the type people do for pride, for the pride of life. This is what he's talking about. Not the normal simple. Ye shall know them by their fruit. If a believer, a believing woman, plates his hair, her hair, you see it different from a harlot, one whose heart is in evil. The hairdo is different. Don't go into the unbeliever style. Of course, not even all unbelieving women that go into evil style. But I'm talking about the one that are given to fashion, are after men, and are after pride of life. 
Don't do it. Love not the world. Neither the things in the world. If any man loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. The love of the world or the things in the world, the lust of uh, the eye, the pride of life, the lust of the flesh is not of the Father, but it's of the world. That's First John chapter 2, verse 15 and 16. So, that is what the Bible is telling us. Who's adorning in verse 3? Let it not be that outward adorning of plating the hair, I've told you what it means, and of wearing of gold. Wearing of gold is earring, or in another version, they put jewelry, or of wearing of jewelry, in another version. It is earring, it's rings, it's bracelets, it's chain, it's uh, necklace, and beads are also used in that fashion. And when we talk about chain, some begin to wonder, what about the wristwatch? We use chain. Yes, to hold the wrist, I mean the watch in your hand is not for decoration. It's not for a show. It is not the chain that carries pride. This is my chain, golden chain. No. No more. Some can be of skin. It can be of uh, uh, any other something. But it's not this highly costly to show your person and minister to your pride. That's what the Bible is avoiding in your life. Yes. Not I mean, who's adorning, let it not be that outward adorning of put, plating the hair and of wearing of gold or of putting on of apparel, putting on of clothes. Just like not the plating of the hair, not the putting on of clothes. These have to be divided into two. The one sinners do, the ones people in their red senses and believers do. Putting on of clothes here talks about putting clothes to attract people, to show your great higher to increase your value. It ministers to your pride. Don't go for this. Don't go for this. Don't wear dress for that. Wear dress for the neatness. Jesus' dress were neat, not fashionable. They were clean, not fashionable. Although people desired it, as any good cloth can be desired. It doesn't mean you should be shabby. Behave as if you are coming from the bush. Behave as if you are a mechanic. Putting cloth that is looking, you have some semi madness. No. No more cloth. Clean cloth. But not ostentatious. Not cloth that, what can we say? You are doing it for harm. We don't have problem with a person, a woman wearing Hollandes, using Hollandes. Why? Because it lasts long. But of course, even these Hollandes, they don't look, in the, they don't look different from the other ones. Other ones are even more flashy. But for the purpose of lasting long, some buy it is not evil. But don't also go for Hollandes for pride. If your cloth, you know, some people are tall. Some as a shot. If you go and buy cloth that is longer than yourself, that you're walking on the ground, uh, uh, go and cut it to your size. If this Hollandis is going to give you trouble in your body, that you will look proud, don't buy it. Don't buy it. Because it should not affect your humility. But I, there are people who have it and are not proud. They are not condemned. Amen? Yes. That is what the Bible says. Continue from there. In 1 Peter chapter 3. Whose adorning, let it not be that outward adorning of plating the hair and of wearing of gold or, or putting on of bad clothes. Torn clothes. You'll find wayward women wearing torn clothes. Tear, tear, 
tears everywhere. You don't do that as a sensible woman. Or clothes that expose your nakedness. Don't say, I'm going to attract my husband. And you're moving outside. Is your husband the only person moving outside? Attract him in the room. Not even where your children are. So, be careful in your appearance. But let it be the hidden man of the heart in that which is not corruptible. These clothes are corruptible. They corrupt your life. That's what the Bible says. Cleanse your body from all filthiness. Because these clothes corrupt your body. This ungodly clothing that sinners use outside corrupt their body. Mix their body unacceptable unto God. God doesn't accept their body because it's corrupted. It's filthy. That's why you must cleanse yourself from all filthiness. Dearly beloved, present your body unto God a living sacrifice. It's in one of these countries I was going and I saw some short, short, short dress. We were looking for some short, some, maybe some clothes for, to buy female clothes. I saw short, short, short dress hanging somewhere. I said, okay, those ones are dressed for children. Somebody said, eh? Dress for children. Mature women. That's where they go to. Because it now gives them this corrupt appearance. This ex body exposing appearance. Clothes meant for children. A woman is putting on. So, the Lord is saying you have defiled your life. And nothing defiled will make it to heaven. You find in churches where the wives of the pastors are walking with armpit expo uh, exposing dresses. The heaven has not known them. They sit on the seat in the pulpit. Their tie is open to corrupt the young men. The choir, their tie is open, short, tight skirt. Instead of wearing trousers, they feel, oh, no, 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 I don't want to wear it. I want to expose my buttocks in the same way. Tight skirt. They have not known about God. Many of them speak in tongues. That tongue is empty gong. When you remove milk from a tin, you can be beat on it. Kakang, kakang, kang, kang, kakang, kang. If milk is there, it will not make that noise. That is empty tin. The tongues they are speaking. Here you think they are Christians. So, that's what the Bible says. Let it be a, a put on inside you. A holiness, beauty, ornamentation of righteousness, humility, gentleness, quietness. Women learn to be quiet, not speaking. Bah, 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 bah. You can speak in the church, but be under control. Don't take over. Don't take over. Be under control. Make sure you're under control. You don't dominate. Make sure, be under control. You can express your mind to the glory of God, but don't take over. You must talk today, you must talk tomorrow, you must talk. No, no, don't do that. Because you'll be a nuisance. You'll be a nuisance. Control yourself. God can use you. When you come to solemn use, it's different from when you are just talking, you are just talking. The Bible says, even the ornament of a quiet and mixed spirit. Learn to be quiet. Don't take over conversation. Don't take over a talk. Learn to control yourself. In a multitude of ways, there lacketh no sin. In a multitude of ways, there lacketh no sin. Learn to wait for your husband. Don't take over the talk at home. It frustrates your husband. You have known, but speak and give him chance to speak. Don't take over his, the talk all. Quietness, control of your spirit is required. This does not mean a woman should not preach. A woman should preach. A woman should not prophesy. A woman should prophesy. But make sure God leads you to do what you are doing. 
but your spirit is under control. It makes your life beautiful. It makes your life wonderful in the sight of God at Ben. Amen. So, uh, the Bible also says, concerning this manner of life, verse, verse uh, 5, for after this manner in the old time, the holy women also, who trusted in God, adorned themselves, being in subjection unto their own husbands. This guyish, stylish, exposing clothes make you not only subject to your husband, it promotes pride that makes your husband not enough. Other people too get interested because you are marketing yourself. This nakedness is marketing. It's not only for your husband. So it's for others too because you are marketing yourself. But in the women in all time, they dress this way. Remember? But let it be the hidden man of the heart in that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, which is, in, which is in the sight of God of great price. For after this manner, in the old time, the holy women also who trusted in God adorned themselves, being in subjection unto their own husbands. If you don't dress in this quiet and meek spirit, you will not subject yourself to your husband. You frustrate that man and make him angry with you. Because he cannot express himself. Before he speaks one, you are in number 20. He's frustrated. Submit. Let God love you. Adorn yourself. Modest apparel. Let God love you. Let your husband love you. That is it. Now, we continue. Palming of hair. All these are worldliness that entered in. They have not been there before. They, they entered into the worldliness that the church uh, got into that brought about palming, jerichoiling, attachment, making your hair long, using various things to elongate your hair. Not even, even the natural trait that you use the natural trait to elongate your hair, it's still the same because you are putting it longer than where it will be. Learn to dress your hair. You don't have much hair, manage it. Manage it. You don't have much hair. Oh, you don't know how to pray very well. Don't go and call a Muslim to come and help you pray. You don't know how your hair is not deep, not long, don't go and invite Satan to give you hair. Manage it. Learn it. And don't be ashamed. Painting your hair into another color. That's what they do in the world. Don't do it. Cutting the hair or shaving the hair not for a woman. If for any reason your hair has to be cut, cover it until it grows long. Because long hair belongs to the woman. Long hair is a shame for the man. Man should not maintain long hair. It's a shame. But woman, it is also a shame if you shave, shave your hair. Because when a woman cuts her hair, she, she, lose, she loses her identity. You can't tell whether it's a woman or a man lying down or going there. Because you have a feminine dress. You're not using it. You're cutting your hair. You're following tradition. Don't follow tradition. Follow divine standard. Again, dyeing your hair. Old women who still want to remain young and be called babies are dyeing their hair. That's for harlots. Old harlots. They are don't call me mama. Don't call me mommy. I'm still in the market. So, what did they do? They dyed their hair to remove old age from them. And some men do the same. Pastors. 
And God said the whoary here is given by God to honor person for age. What happened that you, you refused? God kept you alive up to the age of this. Up to the age of this. You say, no, I will cover my hair. I will, I will dye it into another color. You are a liar. That which you have done is not natural. There are some people that are old, but naturally they don't have white hair. But it's not everybody. Uh, but what about you, young man? That you are still young, but you have white hair. Accept it. It's the work of God. There's a glory God is giving you. Take natural. Take it natural so that don't you, you don't deceive others by painting your own and you cause others to see you as a bad example. Take it like that. Accept it so. In Jesus' name. Yes. Fixing jewels into your hair. Don't do it for your children. Don't fix jewels into the hair of your children. Don't do that. Not even to your hair. Don't fix some things. Don't go after the spirit of this world in your hairdo. Yes. Avoid worldly weaving. Worldly plating of the hair. Now, come to the eyes. Many artificial things have come to the eyes. I think it was in a bank or so, I went. And the lady I met to attend to me, I was seeing another eye inside the lady. I was wondering. You know, I didn't know of that. They could fix something inside that eye. I didn't know. See, why is this girl, this woman's eye like this? Ah, the eye is ruined. Inside it, there's something rolling there. It's looking fearful. Is it put something inside the eye? Ha! Ah, human being. Artificial eyelid, eyebrows, eye what? Eye shadow. I'm calling things which I don't even know them. And many others may still come by the spirit of this world. Eye pencil. Don't put that put in yourself. Eye, eye salve. Don't. All those black things put in the eye. Don't do it. Don't do it. It's ungodliness. It's filthiness. Live natural. If there's any defect, seek medical attention. Sincerely. Yes. Painting your face. Changing your face. Or the whole body. You use chemical. So, permit to change your whole body into, an, into a fair color. Because you're not satisfied. You're looking for beauty. You're looking for praise. You want to come out of ugliness. I am ugly. Who told you? So, all these things are worthlessness. They are things of the world. Love not the world. Sinners in the world do like that. They are following the pattern set and set for them. They like it. They like it. If these people who put on these eyes know how they look to some people, especially somebody like myself, that I see them very dirty. I see them not people you should look at their eyes two times. Because you're seeing some eyes standing out as that of anti-human being. Where is this thing coming from? But they love it. The devil makes them to love it. That's what I'm saying. Keep off from those things. Painting of your face. Yes. Using lipsticks to paint your lips. Even by revelation, the Lord has shown that this thing you use to paint your lips and, and fingers and toenails, fingernails and toenails, they are satanic. They are the blood of human beings. Use, use I mean, a chemical is put on them to change them to various colors. When you lift up your hands, I shall not hear you. They are, they are covered with blood. The, those paintings in your fingernails. Those paintings in your lips. You are following the white women who have backsliding. Christianity, they don't know. It's the one you are following as a style. Thinking as if they are angels. Don't do those things. Don't paint your lips. Don't pen your fingers. Don't pen your toenails. Fingernails and toenails. Don't do that. Or keeping long nails. Boy, girl, 
don't keep long nails, long nails. So, all these things the Lord is telling you, remove them because they are filthiness. Use of cortex, use of lipsticks. They are filthiness of the flesh. In your dressing, the dressing in the world. How do they do it? Women come to church without covering the head. They come like that to church. No one will go to heaven among them, whichever church. And we too will not accept them here. If a lady comes here, you must cover the head. If she, that, she will not cover, she should leave. That's one thing. Because don't expose this church to Satan, to disobedience. To disobedience. Maybe it can happen that the pastor can see a lady somewhere and ignore it, but he cannot keep coming into the church. She cannot keep coming into the church. Never. Otherwise, the pastor is sinning. The certificate, the license of the pastor has been removed by God. You saw a lady coming to my assembly with uncovered hair and you left her. Your certificate is seized. You are preaching in vain. So we know this. That's why we take it seriously. With you. We know this. That our life will be affected. That's why we take it seriously. Yes. Clothes with open back, open front, open heart area open armpit. Don't use them. These harlots that draw, they, they will cut their back or even cut the front and in the way of, uh, the, this is love. They cut the triangle and say love. Love for Satan. Love for dirty people. Love for corrupt people. Women not in their senses. Don't do those things. Don't. It's ungodliness to do that. To cut your back and make your back bare. If some of these choir members of uh, some of these churches, especially uh, the Orthodox and Evangelical churches, they would cut deep. They are going for choir. Sinners going for choir. To sing to who? You cut it so in the front, so deep that your breasts you, we can see one third of your breast outside. How much more when you bend down? Hell will not avoid you because you're not clean. It's filthiness. You're affecting the eyes of the people. You are. So avoid all those things. Yes. Slim or body hawk or snake dresses. Now, all these ladies wearing slim, following their body is snake. Snakes have taken over human beings. Are you aware? Snakes. Some do their own like fish. It's still the same as me water. That water spirits. Snake. I saw it in the body of somebody here. I so I'm going to preach it. After he had gone remove that cloth. If it can be added to, fine. Why should you be looking like a snake? Why? So that your buttocks should appear. Your breast should pull out. Devil. That's evil. Go and wash your cloth. Every woman stand up upon your feet. Stand up. Look at them. You will see snake. Go and change those clothes. Those, thank God for you who dress well. May God bless you. But you who dress like a snake, following your body like that, I'm seeing you. Go and change it. If you don't have cloth, come and meet us and say, Pastor, I don't have money. We are going to do evangelism with us when one that we saw have brought, we have brought to the church is contaminating the church. Go and change those dress. Go and change those dress. And you human being, see them. See your sister who is wearing snake, body hall, slim dresses, and rebuke her. Tell her to go and change it. Otherwise, she will contaminate the place that even you will not make heaven. Because you're so evil and you close your eyes. You are not pitying Jesus on the cross. These young girls want to appeal to men by snake dresses. 
following their body. No gap. When you want to remove it, it's a battle. You fighting yourself. You have heart. You have heart. The next thing is to set somebody here to be saying, you are the woman. You are the one. You are the one. You are the one. In case you say you don't know, and that will be embarrassment. We are ready to embarrass you so that Jesus will be happy with us. Check your dress. Pastors, watch over the people. Where are you allowing these people to come like that? Which ministry are you doing? You are not doing ministry of heaven. To allow these people to come the way they are in sneak dresses, tight, tight body, their buttocks protruded, following their, scared, their side, tiny scared, protruding their buttocks. If they sit down, everything will roll out and you are pastors over them. Con pastors of a congregation of, de of the dead. Go and watch those women. Watch those girls. If, like our sister said, that uh, the, her daughter was speaking of the church, that, uh, the father of uh, the, the daughter of the overseer, the daughter of this, if they were doing this thing I'm doing, those daughters would change. Watch them. The daughters will change. Check it onto their children. Some of you are putting expired dresses on your children. The dress has expired. The dress you bought for that child when she was three, at five, she's still using it. And the skirt is up. No, he's still a child. Who told you? Dividing our church? Or you're wearing, putting trousers on your child? Who has learned how to stand? And even run. Why is she wearing those trousers? Don't do that. Please, church, locate those women, ch children. Find out where their mothers are. Some of their mothers are wives of pastors. Look for them. Wives of leaders. Look for them. Tell them. They should go and change the dress of their children. You can sit down. Yes. That's what God wants you to know. Yes. Jewels on your cloth. Shining stones. You can see you are standing. Or you put hair tie, light. There is satanic light around you. You do like this. Carrying people's attention. You are sitting with your cloth. Turn like this. Cup. Cup. As when they are snapping Mrs. Nigeria. And you think that you can bring that type of, to, that type of thing to the church. Destructing attention. God will pick you. Your stamp coming to church has no meaning. You are corrupting the church. You are disturbing the church. We can bear with the newcomer. But after, oh, the church, our church is good to you, then go and remove that thing. If he loves this church, then she should go and remove it. Both men and women, check what you will buy in the market. If ready-made clothes are spoiled like that, go and sew them. And even our tailors, the tailors are the ones slowing, I mean, sewing these slim, slim dresses. Slim dresses. Sewing slim dresses. Slim dresses. I, we employed a sister, a, a sister for the walk. I saw that her dress was not okay. I bought dress. Bought cloth. I gave her much. When I gave 50000 Go and buy clothes for yourself. She went and gave it to a slim dress that's Seal the snow, so seal snakes. Say, see to me. me, I'm trying. <laughs> I'm trying. They're frustrating me. Look at these snakes this lady is putting on now. They ha it has gone down long, but it's a snake. Which type of life is this? Go on and open up that cloth. And you, please check those who are sewing clothes. And let us have no those who are sewing these bad dresses and stand them up and rebuke them or stop them from coming to church. They're deceiving us. They're deceiving us. They're the children of God. But I'm turning our people into evil people, worldly people to promote immorality. So be careful. Use seamstresses and tailors. Be careful. Make sure. Holiness is accepted. It's observed. God is pleased with the bodies of the people. 
filthiness is removed from the body of the people. That's what the word of God is telling us. Short skirts, tight skirts, trousers, split skirt, or split gown. The church. Watch your daughter to school that she should not wear trousers. Check her, her boxes. When she comes home, no trousers must be there. Burn them. Burn them. Set them on fire. Start it early. Any dress, all these slim slim, destroy them. Destroy them. God will support you. Didn't Jesus take a whip and enter into the temple and whipped those people out of the temple? Was it a sin to him? Was it a, a, a good thing? Didn't they abuse him? Didn't they cry? Didn't they blaspheme him? Does that mean anything? Take Christianity seriously. Give God a holy church. Pastors, give God a holy church. Otherwise, they're not ready for heaven. And they will condemn those who are ready to go there. They will defile them. Sitting position. A woman is to bring her two legs together. But some sit like men. Some sit like men. Opening the tide all together. To cause people to see into their private, where the position of their private body. You know how that affects man? Sit well. Bring your, th- your legs together. You are a woman. And your dress should be long enough that when you bring your legs together, it should overlap your knee. So that nobody will be looking through your knee. Sit well. Get better dresses. Leaders, take note of this. This message is going to the whole world. Take note of this. Keep the church of God righteous. Keep it holy. That's what we're talking about. Don't be condemned with other people who don't know God, who don't have true preachers around them. Yes. What, is the re- what are the reasons why we're firm? Is because these are the dresses of harlots. Proverbs chapter 7, verse 10. Proverbs chapter 7, verse 10. And behold, there met him a woman with the attire of an harlot and subtle of heart. She said, Harlot. These are the dressing of harlot. That's why we say, Don't put them on. You can't be harlots in the house of God. You can't be harlots in the house of God. You can't be prostitutes in the house of God. Whether married or single. We're not looking for your money. We're not looking for the number to be increased by you. If we look after that, we'll not go to heaven. Because we have our reward. Like these other churches. Like these other ministers. Leave them the way they are. Because of money. Because of multitude. The glory of the king is in the multitude of his subjects. But you have got your reward. No heaven. They will quench everything that is going on there. I'm telling you. That is the world. Dressing of harlots. This type of thing pull men into immorality. Matthew chapter 5. Matthew. Chapter 5. They pull men into immorality. Make their hearts to be filled with immoral thoughts. Yes. They pull men into immoral thoughts. Matthew chapter 5 verse 27 and 28. Even to 29. Ye have heard that it was said by them of all time. Thou shalt not commit adultery. But I say unto you that. Whosoever looketh on a woman. To lust after her. Had committed adultery with her already in his heart. And if thy right eye offend thee. Pluck it out. And cast it from thee. For it is, bit, it is profitable for thee. That one of thy members should perish. And not that thy whole body should be cast into hell. 
For ye, ye have heard that it was said by them of all time, thou shalt not commit adultery. There is now mechanized adultery, computerized fornication. Mechanized, computerized. New age adultery, fornication. They are there in the internet. They are there here and there. What Satan has designed now is that you look at a woman who Satan has prepared by dressing. You will, you will find yourself committing adultery, fornication. Then you will meet Jesus again. Very simple, very cheap. On the street, in the bank, in the airport, in the market, in the office. You find a lady sitting next table opposite you, but her skirt stops before the knee. When she enters into that table, it's like that for you over there. She opens for you. And because the inner private part of the woman is powerful to attract the man, you find his colleague looking. He's, look, he's in under force until he surrenders. He wants to look at it. Hey, God says I should not look at it. I'm talking about a pastor that is struggling in the office. He wants to look at it, but God said I should not. He wants, but God said, let's look. Destroying the people. That is it. They want to quench the fire. You in the offices. Ladies, take care of your cloth there. Take care of your sitting position. Take care of your character. Don't provoke, provoke people into immorality. Don't make them me think that as you are now, if they come to you, you will say yes. Be solemn. Be solemn. Control yourself. When you're dealing with men, command the respect of God upon your life. Yes. That is the word of God. Yes. Whoever look at is enough. That's why the devil wants to dress you. That this tight fitting dress, they will look at your buttocks inside. This short, when you bend like that, your inside is open. So that when you sit, there's no way to cover your legs. You are agents of Satan against the rapture against the souls of human beings. And you're in the church. Church, don't allow them. Watch their dress. If they're not qualified, pluck them out. The Bible says, the Bible says, and if their right heart offend thee, pluck it out. However precious that woman is, pluck her out. Her voice is nice in the choir. More than satanic voice. Didn't you hear that Satan was the chief leading precious in heaven so you can take Satan now because of voice because of talent don't you know that some of them use demons to sing so let's go on God go on truth go on righteousness that's the word of God and this is a demonstration of pride because they want to show their body I am well built I am well built. You can have me for marriage or have you in a hotel. If you are really good, nice, will you be advertising yourself everywhere? No. So, these are employed in adverts, televisions, billboards, music, internet, for human defilement and damnation. The young ones go after this for the money they pay for nudity. The sinner, Satan employs these girls to go and show their nakedness and pay them a lot to attract other girls. See, I, you, they, they put me in that billboard. Do you know how much they, they gave me? I was paid 50 million. The cars, the millions, the houses to go and expose yourself, not knowing hell 
is waiting for you for fighting against God. Internet is there. Facebook. Immorality. You must fight. Then what took you there? Then you must go there only for a design purpose with prayers. You people that tell the I mean, handset is always in your hand. You're unholy. You are unholy. Because the things you will see, you don't even look for them. They can't come power. And they take away your time from God. They take away your time. You, your heart is kidnapped. Hijacked. You can't rest. You can't rest. Like a young, a friend of mine in the university. He has been eating sugar cane every day. So he has, he's so addicted to sugar cane. At 12 midnight, he was crying. He has not eaten sugar cane that day. Because, go and look. You look all around, you can't find. So it's, it's, it's morning now. You are addicted to form. Everything, your eyes will be there. Your eyes. And somebody is calling me. And you make human beings greater than God. God is not able to attract you anymore. Satan. Just clear the people to hellfire. And God will never respect you. God, he has enough people in heaven already. It's mercy that said, there's space. Can anybody come in? And you're behaving like that. Who told you that he's going to carry you? God is not your friend for you to mock at, to play with. He's just a patient lover. That's why you're seeing his shadow around you. He's a patient lover. Follow his word strictly in your dressing, in your manner of life. Follow it strictly. That is the mind of God. That is the word of God. You see billboards as everything. Music nakedness of women you don't know what to do again don't watch it don't watch it that's why we pray that God raise up talented men among your children let them do produce things, play music, do what to help sight, to help add, remove the hearts of these younger ones children, you open the television and live for your children because yeah, that's how he will not disturb me he will call your name in hell. She, the child will call your name in hell. And be assured that I'm happy my mother is here. Because you are give, feeding her with evil. Subtly. And uh, she's not aware that the permission you're giving her is deadly permission. That's not how the Lord says you should bring up your children. Don't put evil dresses on them. Don't dress your children with trousers. Don't dress your children with short skirts. Don't paint them. Don't palm the hair of your children. Don't put attachment on your children. What have they done to you that you're sending them to hell? Yes. And men, dreadlocks. You're wearing dreadlocks. You are dirty. You are dirty. You can't come with dreadlock to the church. You can't. Churches that accept dreadlocks are dirty churches. Go punish them for making that church dirty by allowing a dreadlock man to come there. I'm telling you, hi, these people. Stranded here. They put their hair stranded like this. Stranded, stand out in funny like a madman. Is it not really madness? Madness. And you are coming to church. That when they come for conference, we carry them to barb their hair. If anyone is convicted to come and serve God, let him go and barb his hair. Yes. Stylish hair, making the hair do funny. Pong, pong here. What again? Their names according to their generations. Don't go after that. No more here. No more. Just as you see pastors here. It's no more. That's how you should do it. 
Satanic appearance. Satanic appearance. You want to appear like Satan. To dress dirty. And look funny. Look satanic. Area boy. Not bottling, bottling up. Pull their trousers down. Satan. You will meet him. You will surely meet him. You will cry. May God make you come across my preaching. To deliver you. Yes. And if you're here. Or you have a relation. Go and deliver that person. That Satan is looking for by dressing like him. By dressing to dis disgrace God. Who met him in his own image. And is now going after Satan. That disobeyed God. He will go there. Depart from a year cursed. Unto everlasting fire prepared for the devil. And his angels. Yes. Stylish hairdo. Satanic appearance. Slim or body hawk shirts. You are putting body hawk shirts. It's very slim. Or even suit. You want to get this slim one. You are following the world. You are following the world. Yes. Wearing inner dresses without outer covering. Some of these singlets, light singlets that you are wearing for inner dress. If you wear it, wear another thing on top. But you just go out like that with it. That's indecency. It's indecency. Funny drawing. Or writings on dresses. Some dresses, they draw something terrible. Maybe they draw a fearful looking lion on it. You are wearing. What are you carrying about? Fearful looking lion. Devil is like a roaring lion. That's what you are carrying about. Funny dresses you cannot... Uh, Nobility makes you to avoid that. Christianity, holiness, makes you sensitive to the dressing. I've not seen anybody in the church, I've not seen any serious Christian with wearing this type of dress. Pastors' wives, leaders' wives, don't be the first to produce style in the church. Don't be afraid because you mislead others by your style. Make sure you're not fashionable. Go in for fashion. Don't. You should portray divine glory. Having the meekness of God. The holiness of God. Bathing your life. So that everybody that sees you does not see fault. Check out. Be careful. Be more sensitive. Because of your position. Yes. Faded, dirty, rough, and punctured jeans trousers. Faded. If you are a mechanic, don't bring mechanic trousers to this church, to the church. If you are engineer, using that one because it is tough in your workplace. Make sure when you are coming to church, you change. The pulpit is a place of glory. Don't wear faded jeans, jeans into it. Be clean. Be noble in your dressing. Noble. Yes. Dress well. Check well. Study well. Find out. He that judges himself shall be judged of no man. How, can, how will people see me? Will they say? Will they think? Check up that. In what you wear. In what you do. Yes. Yeah. Tight and pencil leg trousers. Tight trousers. Very tight. You see the leg, the leg, the leg has finished. The trouser came down and finished at the leg. No portion remains again. When you want to pull it out, hey, you take time. Sometimes somebody has to help you. I don't understand these human beings. 
Somebody will have to help you. It is in descent. It takes away the glory of God from your life. If you say you're born again, is born again. What generation are we in now? Born again of new age generation. Not a serious born again. How could a righteous Christian would have that type of leg, trouser leg like that? How? You have joined them in the world. They have marked your image. Check your trouser. If you can't find a mate, go and sew one. And I've told you of our, our trade tailors. Any tailor that is a member of Holiness Revival Movement, say I'm born again, I'm a child of God, that is so with pencil trousers for people, should never be considered a Christian. Never. And should not be given attention. Don't carry your cloth to him. Don't carry your cloth to him. Don't carry your cloth to her. Pencil people. That's the word of God to you. Be a dead face. The face. <laughs> In this country, we know Izala people, Izala Muslims. They wear beard and look face because they fight any trouble. Yes, we're here. You look fearful like this. Now everybody has become Izala Muslim everywhere, north to south, east, west, central. Young boys have gone into beer. Young boys. You're copying from the television, from the internet, from the footballers. Are you a Christian? You're having bushy face. Bushy. And the people in the Old Testament, were they not having beard? But the Holy Spirit is leading us to cleanness in Christ. When Joseph was called by, to go and visit Pharaoh, the co Pharaoh was calling him. What did he do? He shaved himself to look clean. Does not even nature teach you that he that has long hair, it is a shame unto him? Does not even your conscience teach you that the society you are living in, interacting with, sees you strange? Can you preach this gospel effectively and be known to be holy in the presence of the, the present day society with bearded body? Some, they dress around, they design around their mustache. They live here, down here. It's a decoration. You are decorating for who? They live here, down. Live another one down. I am telling you. That. What are you doing that thing for? Are you a Christian? What do you want to achieve for God? What, in which way would God take glory? Because that is the way we see sinners. They take pleasure in those things. Be simple. Don't leave bad impression on people. When they see you, let them not see design in your face. Be normal. That is the word of God. Be normal. Painting your body. To change your skin, young man, so that you will look handsome using all these uh, cosmetics, soap, lotion. Don't do it. Keeping long nails, don't do it. Public use of short knicker. You are wearing short knicker outside so people can see your tie. You don't know as you lost after the woman's tie. They lost after yours too. As you cherish the exposed tie and it moves you to thoughts of immorality. Do you know that it works like that in a woman? Do you want to destroy this woman, women, 
Christ died for. You did those things in ignorance. You, when you were serving under churches that don't know God, or even when you, when you had not given your life to Jesus, but now God commands you to stop that. If you wear short naked in your privacy in the room, no trouble. You are right, you are free. Who sees you? But don't wear it out. Sinners don't have problem. But you are in the light. Behave as children of life. I hope that one, do I need to talk about it? I think I don't. Because the society you live in, men don't wear earrings. That sin is left for women alone. Where did you join them? That sin of wearing earrings, it's only women that, were doing it, that are doing it. Society have learned how to even approve it. Approve it. Society has learned how to. The Christian society have learned how to bear with it. Waiting for hellfire for them. If they will not repent. And you, you are a man. You want to behave effeminate. That is how homosexuals are, dis are discovered. They wear earrings in one ear. Or even in two. I am a woman. I am a woman. And these men who are looking for money from demons, they tell them to do homo homosexuality. So they look for you. And pay you. Uh, God, keep your church holy. God cleans your church. You raise up holiness revival movement to set pattern for the world in Christ. Let the spirit of righteousness fall upon us and let us be perfect. In Matthew chapter 5, I conclude. Matthew chapter 5. The Bible tells us in verse 48. Everybody, are you there? One, two, go. Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. For you who say, I know we're, we're human beings, we may not do it perfect, be perfect. Why am I putting this on you heavily? I am another Paul. Colossians. Colossians chapter 1. Yes. Verse 28 and 29. Whom we preach warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom that we may present every man we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. Whereunto I also labor striving according to his walking which walketh in me mightily. I am not at rest. If I see you off in a point, however small, I am aching inside me. It's the use of wisdom. Otherwise, I would have been bullying many of you. Personally. Boop! Why are you like this? Mm. Boop! Why? But wisdom will not allow me to do that thing. It's working inside me. It's working. Power is working in my life to make you perfect. That's why I don't give you rest. If you come near me, you must be perfect. Try it and see. Let's rise to pray.
commit yourself before the throne of grace. Oh Lord, perfect me for heaven. These are some of the areas where many of us are found wanting. Oh Lord, perfect me. Both outward and inward. Both outward and inward. Perfect my work with you. In my dressing, it's not everything you have now. Now you may think that it's perfect before the Lord. Commit yourself before the Lord. Lord, open my eyes. What is it that I'm putting on that you don't like? Ask God. What is it that is a stumbling block to others that I still put on? That's why you are here. What is it? Open my eyes to the truth. Talk to God, talk to God, talk to God. Some of you are hearing this message for the very first time. Lord, open my inner eyes that I may see. Your pastor has never told you before. You brought a friend, you invited somebody. This is the time to pray for such an individual. Lord, open her eyes. That is the reason why she will go to hell. Pray, Lord, for this ones I have brought in here. For this ones I have invited. Lord, open their eyes that they may see. Let your convincing power fall on them in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Open your eyes. Some of us might say, this message is not for me. This message, I've heard it. In fact, I was even in the program. But do you know that the enemy is doing one thing or the other concerning your dressing? Is it the same way you have been dressing when you came to Holiness Ram Revival Movement, you are still dressing? Has fashion not begin to enter it? Sister, how many times have your leader corrected you on that dress code? Now, you now wear high heel. Small, small powder is coming in. Some of you, your heart polluted. Why can't I be using this little, little perfume? Why? You have not begun to sow styles. The Lord is using this opportunity for you to pray. Sanctify my heart. You have begun to love those people that come to your office with those evil dressing. Those evil. You love them in your heart. The Lord condemns you by that. You are going to pray. Some of you still have some things you have not destroyed in your house. And you know the Lord is against it. You are going to pray. Lord, sanctify my heart. You have begun to love them. You have begun to love them. The Lord has come to visit you on this mountain. God is saying that you have begun to backslide. Eh? Even this one, does it matter? Even this one, does it matter? You are going to talk to God. Lord, sanctify my heart. Cry to God now. Go ahead and bring it up. Pray. Lord, sanctify my heart. In any way I've gone astray, your clothes are beginning to be tight now. Begin to be tight now. The Lord is speaking to you. Sanctify me. Sanctify me. Oh Lord, in every area I've gone astray, 
In every area, Lord, I'm not doing it right. In every area, Lord, I'm not doing according to your glory. Lord, show me mercy. I want to change. I want to be perfect. Tell God I want to be perfect. Tell him I want to be perfect. Talk to God. Talk to him. Father, I want to be perfect. I don't want to be found wanting in any way. Father, I don't want to be found wanting in any way. Father, open my eyes that I may know those areas where I'm already drifting away. You don't know, you're already being condemned. You are still putting on those things and Satan is, is happy. He's happy. Ha! Huh. Change me, oh Lord. Cry to God. You are already on the, on the other path. You are drifting away. Show me my nakedness. Every stubborn, you have been corrected several times. Every spirit of stubbornness, take it away. Take it away. Take it away. Take it away. Purge me. Purge me. Purge me. Purge me. Perfect me. But is somebody praying. In Horemon, there's no hypocrisy. You are not on the path, you're not on the path. You are out of the path, you're out of the path. Show me mercy and put me back on the right path. There is still a struggle in your heart. A deep struggle in your heart. You are still struggling with some kind of clothes. You can't destroy them. Say, no, they are expensive. They are expensive. You are playing with hell? What are those things doing in your house? What are those dresses still doing in your house? Show me mercy. Cry to God. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Shout a better amen now. I want us to take two, three, four minutes or so to pray for our children. Some of us, we dress holy very well like this. But all your children, a picture of what all what daddy have said. One woman came to my office with the daughter. The woman dressed holy, but the daughter, mm, like a harlot. I asked, e excuse me, is he your daughter? He said, yes. Kai. Oh, remote sister, your daughter's Jezebel. You have been asking, is this is Shiloh. God is going to answer your prayers now. You will cry to God. You will hold on to God like Jacob held on to God. You will hear my prayer now. Lord, give all my children divine encounter. Cause their eyes to be open. Oh Lord, you are the only one that can change them. They will not go to hell. Some of them are in all these terrible churches. Evil churches. Cry to God. As a mother. You are a mother. You don't want them to go to hell. You have talked enough. Talk to God now. No. They are not going to hell. Take away this evil dressing from them. It's hard to pray. Are you talking to God? Cry to God. They are on their way to hell. Their dressing has condemned them. Their, these evil dressings have condemned them. Talk to God. Talk to God. Cry. You talk to them, they abuse you. No. Father, by this time next year, if you tarry, I'm coming with my daughters to hold them all. Pray, pray, pray. Cry to God. Cry to God. 
Don't stop. Don't stop. Your prayers are ascending. Don't stop. Your prayers are ascending. Don't stop. Hey. The violent take it by force. The violent take it by force. Don't stop. Jesus. 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 Pray. Pray. Ask. It shall be given. Seek. You will find. Knock. It shall be opened. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Lord, we give you praise and glory. Yes. Yes. Lose them from the paths of darkness. Every stubborn heart. Hey. Spirit of the last days. Lose them. 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 From the paths of darkness. Chains of darkness. Hey. Shackles of the enemy. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Blessed be your name forever. Blessed be your name forever. Worship. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. It is done. It is done. If the Lord tarries, by this time next year, you are coming with your daughters. They will wake up and say, Mommy, that church, I want to come with you. I will have changed these things. I've changed these things. Then we have divine encounter in the name of Jesus. One more prayer point. We have seen holiness churches that have been infiltrated with some of these things. Holiness pastors. You see, even their children worse than harlots. How the enemy penetrated them bit by bit. I know of one that left the church and joined a holiness church and became a pastor in that place. Holiness church. The last time I saw her with a very heavy weapon, I said, what is this? <laughs> you can't differentiate them from some of these holy churches. It will never happen to her anymore. I said, it will never happen to her anymore. We are going to pray. Whatever device the enemy is trying to use, to dilute, to infiltrate itself into holiness revival movement, we are going to release the blood of Jesus to cancel them. And the Bible says we should not be ignorant of the devices of the devil. They have devices. They have wires. This one, are you sure this one is? That's how it will start. But not here. I say not here. This is Jesus' church. Horemo is of God. He said, I am Horemo. We are going to pray. Oh Lord, Protect your church. Protect your church. Protect your church. No evil infiltration. Is somebody praying now? My unit, my chapter, my zone, oh Lord. Preserve the church. Preserve the church. Preserve the church. Preserve the church to the end. In the name of Jesus, our testimony in holiness realm movement is preserved. Our testimony in holiness realm movement is preserved to rapture. In the name of Jesus, we have just one moment, one minute to pray that prayer. In the name of Jesus, go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I 
and pray for yourself. Oh Lord, preserve me. This testimony will not change. Preserve your church. Preserve your church, O God, in holiness, righteousness, and truth. We worship. Begin to appreciate God for the answer prayers. Give him praise and glory. Appreciate him. Appreciate him. Appreciate him. Give him praise. Hallelujah. We are in for a wonderful time in his presence. Give him praise. Hallelujah. We worship him. As we prepare to take the next message, as we prepare to take the next message, we take this song. We worship you. We worship you. We worship you. We worship you with all our heart. We worship you. Father, we worship you. Father, we worship you. Father, we worship you. We worship you. Father, we worship you. Father, we worship you. Father, we glorify you. We worship you. Father, you do well. 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 What your hands? Father, you do well. 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 Father, you do Father, you do well. Father, you do well. Jesus, you do well. Father, you do well. Amen. Lord, we thank you for what you have done for us already, for bringing us alive, no accident. We thank you for what you have done to gather us again before your presence. Lord, we thank you. We love you, Lord Jesus, as we have come for purging. Father, you will purge us. We will go with testimony in Jesus' name. Your glory will fill our heart in Jesus' name. Lord, we are starting the program. We pray that, Lord, you will start with us. As we continue, continue with us. And we thank you for being in the camp. We love you for loving us. We appreciate your love. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for in Jesus' name we pray. Put your hands together as you take your beautiful seat. I welcome you all in the name of Jesus. Amen. May the Lord bless you all in Jesus' name. Welcome you all to... This International Women Conference 2024. May your life never be the same again in Jesus' name. We are so grateful. Thank you. We are grateful to see you all in good health. Even if you are sick, you are going back healthy in Jesus' name. Thank you. God bless you. I'm here to give you a message called information and instruction 
in the conference. Hallelujah. The Bible says whatever thing we are doing, we should do it decently and in order. Hallelujah. God wants us to do everything in this conference decently and in order. Simply mean you don't want anybody to do something that the wrath of God will come upon him or her in this place. Because we have men too among us. So we should be very careful of what we are doing. Hallelujah. The Lord don't want us to, to be murmuring. Maybe you are there, you want to do something you don't know. Or you want to get something, you don't know where to get it. We don't want you to be murmuring because murmuring is a sin. So we want to give you some information. Hallelujah. One thing I want you to know, this is the house of God. It's a place where one can be blessed. Like same way a person can be judged. This is the house of God you and I, we are in. And we are in the house of God and before the, the almighty God in the presence of God. Hallelujah. So whatever thing we are doing, we should know that God is here. If, we are, if you, you are a careless person, but when you are in the house of God, be, be fearful. Fear the presence of God and make sure that whatever you are doing, that God will not be angry with you in Jesus' name. Bible says, God is not mock. Whatever a man sweat, that shall he reap. Don't forget... Whatever you will be doing in this conference, be good or bad. Because there are some people, your own plan is to do bad. You will pay your transport, you will come all the way just to come and do bad. But some are coming to seek God, to do good, to work with all their heart and please God. But one thing I want to tell you, whatever you are planning to do in this conference, be good or evil, know that you will reap it. You can reap it happily or you can reap it painfully. Because God has said, whatever a man soweth, that shall he reap. Hallelujah. But I pray that you will sow goodness and you will reap blessing in Jesus' name. You will not be a disobedient woman in this conference in Jesus' name. God loves obedient children. People that believe in his word, that obey his word. Anything that they are going to say to you from this altar, doing through announcement or doing through preaching, I want you to take it with all your heart seriously and obey. Don't only be a hearer of the word, but be a doer of the word. Hallelujah. And be a daughter of God by keeping the house of God in order. Don't allow other people to come and spoil the presence of God in our midst. Don't forget... Only one person can grieve the spirit of God in our midst. If somebody is doing bad, if there is an Achan in our midst, you know God will be stand still until we remove the Achan in our midst. So you and I, we are watchmen. Hallelujah. The Bible tells us that you have made us a watchman. When we see evil coming, we blow the trumpet so that when the trouble comes, give warning to the people so that their blood will not be on our hands. That's why the management of this ministry, Holiness of Our Movement, is bringing this message to you, this guidance, this instruction, for you to know what to do and what not to do in this conference, so that tomorrow your blood will not be in our hand when God will be judging you. So please listen and listen carefully in Jesus' name. I want you to have the fear of God for one thing, because God is in our midst. Deuteronomy chapter 23, verse 14. Open to the book of Deuteronomy. Chapter 23, verse 14. I read, For the Lord thy God walketh in the midst of thy calm, to deliver thee, and to give up thy enemies before thee. Therefore shall thy calm be holy, that he see no unclean thing in thee, and turn away from thee. Hallelujah. God is in the camp. He is here to deliver you from your enemy. He is here to give you freedom. He is here to turn your story around. He is here to purge your life. God is here to bless all of us. But he gives condition. In the, in the scripture, the ending part is said, it said, 
Therefore, shall thy camp be holy. We should keep the camp holy by doing things that is right. We should not commit sin in this camp. No gossip in this camp. No backbiting, no malice. If you are not talking with one of your sisters in your state, in your nation, please make sure both of you settle before going back or else you will be wasting your time before God and God will handle you. Hallelujah. Because he told us, he said, the wrath of God is coming upon disobedient children. God has told you that I hate malice, I hate gossip, I hate backbiting. So strive not to be doing those things. Strive to be perfect. Don't come here and still continue in the malice, backbiting, and all kind of evil. Don't continue. That he see no unclean thing in thee. Try that every uncleanness in you, any unrighteous lifestyle in you, should be purged in this conference in Jesus' name. Try to be an obedient child of God so that God will bless you. So that when you pray, you lift up your hands. In this conference, there will be time for prayer. You will be asking God, as the messages will be going on, you will be asking God, God visit me, God bless me. And when you obey whatever thing they will be saying here, I want to tell you, you will testify. Even if you don't testify here, when you go back to your nation, to your state, your, your city, anywhere, you will one day come out and give testimony in Jesus' name. Please, as I say, let everything be done decently and in order. First Corinthians chapter 14, verse 40. That is what the Bible says. Now I am warning you, what are the things you should do? What are the things you should not do? In the hall of meeting, we have 15 toilets. On my right hand side, we have 10. You can see the two doors facing each other. This toilet side is for the female, for the women. Five this side, five this side. Down here is for the male. I don't know if they will allow the women to use there since the women are much, but I don't know. But that place, my left hand side, used to be used for the male, which is five but toilet that is there. You are free to use it. Hallelujah. But leave it clean. When you go in to use the restroom, don't go there and mess it up and come out and say, ah, I'm, I'm pressed. You just mess it up and leave it and then come and sit down. God will not be happy with you. God said in his word, we should not make our brothers to stumble. What the Bible means is that don't cause your brother to sin. And this thing called memory is a sin. When you go into the restroom, you messed it up. Another person who wants to go and use it, she will start murmuring. Which kind of thing is this? How can this place be like that? They, they, they are preaching holiness. Their bathroom is very dirty. And don't forget, we have new invitees in our midst. They are expecting to see this place. Cleanliness is next to godliness. That's what the Bible says. They are expecting us to be more clean, more decent. What we are preaching is what we are practicing. So please, when you go to the restroom, make sure you leave it clean. Amen? Even if you go there and meet somebody that is not a child of God, because there are some people here, they are not a child of God, they are not born again, they are devil worshippers. They will do all to cause problems. When they go there, they will mess it up. Don't say, I made it messed up, so I cannot go and clean somebody's mess. No. If you cannot do it, call the, the sanita sanitation uh, department to clean it. But I'm pleading with you, you two don't go and add to the mess and say, I, I met it like me too, I will add my own and leave. Who will clean it? It is not by magic. It's human being that is going to clean that, those mess. So please feel for the, the brother or the sister that are in sanitation department that they are the one cleaning your mess. If you cannot clean somebody's mess, he is disgusting, he's like, ah, I can't do that. Then what about the one that will come and clean it? Is it that she, she too don't have feeling, but she's doing it. God, I'm doing it to, to serve you. And God will judge you that did that. So please, when you are using the restroom, make sure you clean it. If you do not meet water there, ask for water. There are many uh, tanks around the camp. Just walk, walk a little distance, fetch water, and bring and use. Amen. 
Please, it has come to our notice that some people are carrying chairs to bathe their babies in the bathroom or to carry them and do one thing or the other. Don't carry the chairs in that place. Don't carry the chair to go and bait anybody in that place. Please, we are begging you. If the person is sick, let the management be aware. They will tell you how to go about it. But don't carry any of our chairs, the chairs you are sitting on, don't carry the chair in the hall to go and bait in that bathroom. And then another notice has come to us that people are baiting in the bathroom in the hall. Actually, this whole bathroom is just for you to use to ease yourself. But if you go there to bait, and you know many people sleep in the hall, if all of you go there to bait, you finish the water they will have pumped for urination, for, 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 for using the toilet. Instead of you using it to flush, now you are using it to bait. And you, there will be not enough water again when the program commences. Because in the morning, all of you that will be bathing there will have wasted all the water. And now the thing the water is there for to you, you need to flush, water will not be there again. And the place will start smelling, and those that are sitting closer there will not be paying attention to the word of God. They will be moving up and down, the place will be smelling. And this is the house of God. God is in the hall. How do you want the place to be smelling in the presence of God? Because of you urinating and this. And you that will finish the water. So please, from today, we are pleading with all of you, no more bathing in the bathroom. There are many toilet bathrooms we have in the hostels. Everybody can use it. Don't bathe in the bathroom again. It's only to be used for urination or to use as to ease yourself by pooing. Please, sanitation department, take note. Don't allow people to be bathing there. And anyone that disobeys this order, arrest the person and bring the person to us. Nobody to bet there again in Jesus' name. Do not carry kitchen bowls to the, to the toilet. Some of you, if one person enter that toilet and see one kitchen bowl, when they are giving food around, the person will never eat again. So don't make somebody to be angry or feel bad to eat the food that God has provided for us. By seeing something and then everything about how we say, Kai, I went to the bathroom. I saw this same bowl there. Don't carry kitchen bowls to the toilet. Amen? Please don't carry kitchen bowls there. If you want it, if you want a, a, a fetching bowl, go to the production department. This empty CD cups, they used to give it. And then we have some Bella that we bought. You can ask for it. Maybe if it's available, they will give you. But go to the department of production and beg for all these CD um, 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 pouch, they will give it to you in Jesus' name. Please, some of you, you use shattered water. As women, since you, you want to use the restroom, water is not there. You have used to use water, which is very good. You use shattered water, very good, there is nothing wrong. But don't drop the shattered water in the sink or at the floor. When you finish using the shattered water, what you want to use it for, maybe to brush your mouth, Finish using the shattered water, carry the remaining leather, the, 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 the remaining leather back outside. There are trash and those beans that are outside, drop it there. Don't drop it in the toilet or put it in the sink. There was one particular air that the conference finished, the toilet blocked, and then when the plumber they came to work on it, they noticed that somebody stuffed a whole packet of bread inside the toilet and the, the thing stuck. It was another money spent. Why are you doing this? Wasting the finances of God by your careless behavior. That's why we have told you, don't allow your children to go to that bathroom alone. Sanitation department, listen to me, sit there. Any child that is going to use the bathroom alone, don't allow him or her to enter that bathroom. Let the child go and call the mother. Please, mother, carry your child or children for yourself to the bathroom so that you're able to monitor them how they should use the toilet, they will not spoil it. After you are going thanking God, we are here crying and you will not be blessed. So please, do not drop any sanitary pad in the toilet sink. It will not be flushed. So when you finish, are, I'm reaching there, we have shopping mall here, they have toilet paper. You will go and buy for yourself. 
to be wrapping your, sanit your used sanitary pad. When you finish, you dispose it very well in Jesus' name. Then we are going to food. Please do not collect more than one plate of food in this conference. When they are sharing food, you want to collect two for yourself. If you want another plate of food, ask for it. If it remains, they will give it to you. But don't collect and keep while another sister is sitting down. Since in the morning she too is hungry, but you have collected her own portion. So please, when it remains, then they will give back to you. Or you can go to the kitchen and ask, I'm still hungry, I know they will give you food. But don't collect more than one or two plates for yourself. Amen? If the food is too sweet in your mouth, please ask, don't keep for yourself. Then the kitchen department said they used to have problem with some people. They like joining those that are serving. When people are coming to serve food, you will just get up from your seat and join them, start serving. Please, nobody should join the servers. If you are not part of the serving team, don't join the servers. Please, everything should be done decently and in order. You can't do that in other places. If you are not a worker in that company, you can't just get up and begin to work. When you go to the banks or anywhere, they'll say, this door, staff alone is allowed. No, no, no customer can just enter there. You enter there, there is suspect, it's problem. So if we can obey, the law outside. What about in the house of God? So please, I know you have zeal, but please control your zeal in Jesus' name. Don't join serving department where you are not part of them. Hallelujah. Likewise, the same thing, don't join the ushering department. Ushers are going up and down. They are on their uniform. Don't join them to say, I'm feeling sleepy. Let me to start going up. Amen. So as I was saying, don't join the ushers. Hallelujah. If you are feeling sleepy, you can stand behind. When the sleep has finished in your eyes, come back to your seat in Jesus' name. And then this is for the ushers. We have been hearing complaint from some people, the way you tap them when they are sleeping, as if you are angry with them, they are sitting and you are standing. So from now on, don't be tapping somebody again. Don't use pen to, the, to pierce the person, but use pen to tap the chair. When somebody is sleeping, hit the chair and let the person wake up. Ushers, are you hearing me? So don't use your hand again, be hitting somebody. Don't use your pen to pierce the person. Don't do that. Use your hand or the pen to hit the chair. Hit it very well, the person will wake up. Hallelujah. Thank you very much. Please do not sit outside or you are walking outside half naked. Because women, they are good. I'm feeling hot. Please, even God in heaven knows the place is hot. <laughs> Please, I beg you in the name of God. Amen. So we don't want to be seeing women sitting with half wrapper or sleeveless blouse or some kind of transparent dress or nightgown and be saying, I'm feeling hot. The place is, is too hot. I'm sitting outside for fresh air. Please don't forget you are in the presence of God and you are in the house of God and we have people in your midst. You are not sitting in your parlor, neither in your bedroom. You are in a different environment and you are in the presence of God and other people are here too. And we should not allow our brothers to stumble. Somebody will look at you and, and lost after your, your hand or what. So please, we have prayed and we believe God will answer us that the sun will not be too hot in Jesus' name. And by the grace of God, our Father and Lord have helped put enough fans, you know, ACs in some places. We are growing up, but don't expose your body and follow the devil to give you an excuse. Say the place is hot. 
those that are in hell, they are crying to come back. Even those where they are in Dubai, Dubai is very hot, but you see the Muslims cover themselves. They jab themselves in that kind of heat. So it is not us that this place is a little bit at least fresh here, wind is blowing. Don't come outside half naked. And when they tell you to go and put on something better, you'll be saying, I'm feeling heat, I'm feeling heat. Then you are a disobedient child, or disobedient woman, and the management will handle you seriously. So please don't face embarrassment by disobeying the word of God in Jesus' name. There should be no quarreling in the hostel, in the hall, in the restaurant, in the hotel, anywhere you are. We don't want to hear two sisters, they are fighting or they are quarreling. We don't want to hear reports in, the, in, in, in this building, Esther building, Sarah building, Aquila, Priscilla, or any hotels our foreign brethren are staying, that quarreling is coming from their room or the next place. Please, we don't want to hear quarreling. Let love rule this conference in Jesus' name. No business, no selling in the hostel, no selling in the hotel. Don't carry your stockfish, crayfish, up and down, or your wrapper, or whatever, in the hostel. Do your business outside. Hallelujah. You can tell somebody, I'm selling this, I'm selling this. That is very good. We can patronize you. That is very good. But let the person meet you outside. Amen. Don't forget, Jesus whip those that are doing business. So don't come and do business here. Do it outside. Tell somebody, I'm selling this. Lunch time at the good time. Don't do business when the service is going on. Even those that are selling outside, I pray they will hear us, but I know they will be sending messages here. When messages is going on, when preaching is going on, bookshop, shopping mall, restaurants, everywhere to be closed. We are not here for food. We are here for the word of God. Hallelujah. We are not little children. We can control our appetite. Just for a few minutes when message is going on, control your appetite. And then after the message, lunch time, break time, you can go and get what you want. Don't be going up and down. Say, I am hungry. I am hungry. The time you are busy going up and down, that is the time the angel that will give you a blessing will not meet you at your seat. So please, when there is time for food, it's time for food. But some people, when they say lunchtime, you go and sleep. For you to go and look for food that time I eat, you will be sleepy. When they say come into the hall, they say, hey, let me go and get food very fast. You are very unserious. You are not serious. Because there is time for everything. That's what the Bible says. No, no, so when they say lunchtime, go and look for food, eat. If the food, the kitchen food is not ready, go and buy food. Eat and go and rest. When the time to come in for hall, come in. Because as we say, so God we do. Amen. So please, don't do business in the hall, as I say. In the hostel, in the hotel, carry your, your people outside. During the time of lunch time or time they will give us to rest, you can use that time to do your business with your people. No loud gisting or praying in the hostel or in the hotel or anywhere they lodge people to, to, to be. Some people, we know you are coming from a church where there is fire church. So when you are praying, the roof should come down. You don't know how to pray small. We appreciate it very well. But please, when it's time to sleep, some people want to sleep. When there is time to rest, let the people rest. There's big space outside. You can come out. Even if you want to do all night, it's up to you. But just that in the morning, make sure you will not be sleeping in the hall. So you can go outside and be praying while others are sleeping. But you will not be on your bed and be praying, be speaking in tongues, Binding and casting and breaking down, even our building, you want to bring it down. And when they say, Sister, your voice is too loud, please, I want to say, Yeah, you begin to say, Maybe you are a witch. I'm suspecting you. My prayer is peppering you. No pepper, it's not pepper. Hallelujah. Come outside. People want to sleep. Some people have migraine, headache. If they don't sleep in the morning, they'll be having headache. Some people have high blood pressure, BP. If they don't sleep, their BP will shoot up in the morning. So you, that God has given you good health, praise the Lord, but don't allow other people to be sick because of you or they will not be able to come to the hall in the morning. Some will be ashamed to tell you that, sister, your voice is too loud. 
but they will be like, God, I cannot sleep. I can't. Two hours, this sister pray two hours. So please, we don't want loud praying in the hall, in the, in the, in the hostel. When, there is, when it's time to sleep, if nobody is there, you can do your prayer. But as soon as people start coming in, reduce your prayer. Or you go outside, leave the place, come outside. After you finish praying, go back in Jesus' name. Do not keep separate chair or space for somebody that is coming later. Maybe the person say, please, please, I've not bet yet. When you go, keep a space for me here. Put front seat. Put where the fan is. Put, put Bible for me where you see the fan. And why, all, <laughs> why others have come in too? Early morning, there are some people too, they wake up early to sit where the fan is. You, you wake up late. So please, we should treat everybody here equally. We are all one in Jesus' name. Sister, do fast and come. If you meet front seat, praise the Lord. But I will not keep space for you. Even if it's your sister or your friend. Please don't be selfish Christian. Love other people too. Hallelujah. So as you come, take your own seat. While others are coming, they will take their seat. When your sister come or your friend, any seat she made, she will take it. So please don't keep space for somebody here. If you do that, it's a sin. Hallelujah. Don't dirty the hall. When you drink shattered water, you see you made the place very clean. Don't drink shattered water and drop it and say ah, the usher will pick it up. That is wickedness. Don't treat a human being like that. Don't dirty the hostel. After you have finished eating your biscuit or eating your remaining food or whatever till you buy something outside, when you finish, you just through the window. You just throw something or you throw it by your bedside. What is that for? If you can do that in your house, they don't do it here. Because in your room, in your house, you always want it to be clean. You don't allow people to put leather anywhere. So don't do it in the house of God. Carry your trash. Carry your dirty in your hand. Or your, your leftover food or biscuits, leather or kunu bottle or whatever thing. Dispose it very well. Look for it. Does being put it. Even if you need to walk a little distance, just do as an obedient child of God and God will bless you. Walk and go and put it. Sweep it, find leather bag, pack all the dirty and trash it so that the hostel will be clean. You met it clean. It's women that clean it. They clean the place everywhere. When you come, don't leave it dirty. Please, women that like washing. Every time you will be going and leave your undies, I don't understand. So please, this time, don't forget anything like that. And we want to disagree with washing. We don't want people to be washing. I don't know what you are washing. You have planned to come for a conference. If you are somebody that don't wear, don't wear one cloth a day, you times it four days, two, two cloth a day is eight cloth. You can pack eight cloth. Then you wash, I wear this, I wore this one today, I have to wash it. No, no, no. Don't come and waste the water. Because when you use your time to waste the water, when the people want to wash in the morning, there will be no water. So please... Take your time. Don't do washing. We have laundry. I'm coming there. Report every evil you notice in the, in, the, in, the minish, in, the, in the camp or in the hostel to the management. Anybody that is breaking the rules, please report. Hallelujah. Do not carry anything in this conference that is not given to you by the authority, by the management. Some of you, you will go to the kitchen. You will pack remaining this, remaining this. Don't carry any remaining food again. If the authority, the management did not say you should carry. Do not find anything in the hostel and say, ah, I like these slippers. I carry. If somebody that drop it there, come and ask. Whatever decision that will be taking, the Holy Spirit will lead the management what to be, do, to be done. But don't just carry the slippers. Don't carry wrapper. Don't carry anything you find here and say you like. Hallelujah. Anything you find in the ground, maybe money, maybe book or something, please carry to the leadership. Carry to the, the coordinators, the overseers are here. Say, I found this thing on the ground, 10 naira, 1,000, or even foreign currency. We have foreign bread in here. So please don't pocket it and say, God has blessed me. Hey, today's my day. It's not your day. That is somebody's money. Bring it. You find a phone, bring the phone back. You found the wrapper, bring it, they will announce in Jesus' name. Take every instruction given to you through preaching or through announcement very serious. Please, I'm begging you all so that you will not waste your time coming here. 
a little disobedient will turn away God from your life. So be obedient. Do not come and be praying. Next, don't come and be praying in the, before the altar here or you want to roll at the altar. God is everywhere in the camp. Jesus is everywhere in your hostel. Even when you are standing buying food under the tree, walking up and down, you can be praying, walking. Jesus is everywhere. He's not only on the altar. For you to come and be rolling, rolling, rolling. Please, we have cleaned the altar. It is not, it's, it's not dirty for you to come and be rolling there. Don't come to this altar. In the night, don't sleep on the altar. We don't train you people like that. It is not the way God wants us to do. We should have faith that God is everywhere. It is not in a particular place in the church. Maybe your denomination that used to tell you the altar is holy. The altar is holy, but everywhere is holy in the name of Jesus. Foreign brethren, do not give your number carelessly to anybody. Because we have been having reports like that. Somebody walk up to me, I give my number to the person, and now the person is disturbing me. Help me, school fee, house rent, money, but the person is so disturbed. She, he or she don't know what to do again because he has given the number, believing that the person is born again or know what to do. Please, Bible says, lay and suddenly your no man, foreign brethren, or even you, please don't give your number anyhow to anybody because some people are only here for certain reason. They are not here for God because our body should be cast onto the Lord, not to man. You look at foreign brethren as if they are the one going to solve your problem. See them too, they are coming to look for God to solve their problem. So please, don't go and cast your burden onto them. Cast it to Jesus, for he cares for you. Hallelujah. So foreign brethren, take note. If you want to do charity to somebody, it's very good. But please, let the management be aware of any charity you want to offer to anybody. Because there are some people, you help them in their state, in their, na in their nation. They are not serious. They are not going to meet him chapter meeting, they are not even born again. They are members by mouth, not by action. So you will be pouring God's money on somebody that don't merit it. So be careful before tomorrow you come and say, he, I didn't know, and I gave him or her plenty money. Please, any help you want to help somebody, that you know it's a big help. Let the management guide you. Seek counsel. Hallelujah. Or even if you want to help the chapter, the unit, the movement in your nation, in your state, Please let the movement, management, the leadership be aware that this is what you want to do. They will not stop you, but they will cancel you so that tomorrow your money will be made fruitfulness for you in Jesus' name. Keep your property well. Please don't say, ah, we are in holiness camp. Yes, we are in holiness camp. But even in the holiness camp, there are eight camps in our midst. Please, not all that are here that have the fear of God. Don't leave your phone anyhow. Don't drop your purse anyhow. Don't just drop your bag anyhow. And then tomorrow you're going to say, ah, they say they are holiness people. They, I never know they have hand rubber in their midst. Don't carry our name badly like that. So please take care of your property well in Jesus' name. So um, lastly, women are like sending their children outside. Mommy, I want to we. You will just say, God, say, God, say, don't, don't disturb me. I'm listening to me. Say, and the child will go and sit before the door and baptize the door for us. And the smell will be coming. Please, we will beat your child very well. So if you don't want us to beat your child, bum, bum, very well, carry the child to the bathroom. Don't teach them to be peeing outside. How will you be training a baby girl to be showing her nakedness outside? And when they grow up, you begin to say, God, hey, mommy, pray for me. This girl wants to be naked. I will not like nakedness. You have been teaching her to be standing naked. So don't carry your child outside to pee. Even if he says a baby, carry the child inside the bathroom. Amen. The B side of my message is the information. I want to be informing you um, that God has helped the movement to provide some things that you will need. Be informed that we have shopping mall. The shopping mall is down to my left hand side. When you go down like this, you will see the shopping mall. It's a mini mat where you can get your soap, toothpaste, slippers, beverages, cold drinks, water, eggs, and even some raw materials for cooking. Maybe you want to cook your own food. 
You say, oh, I don't like the way they do this. So you can get your gari there and little, little things that you can cook for yourself in Jesus' name. In the same building, we have pharmacy there. Try our drugs. You will testify in Jesus' name. Because some of our drugs that we have there, they are foreign drugs. God is blessing our, civil, our sisters and brothers from abroad, our brethren. Sometimes when they are coming, they bring drugs. Or sometimes daddy will buy drugs from there, they will send it. So some of our drugs, you will see that they are, they are good drugs. And you, you know, anything in abroad, when the white people are doing it, even the Chinese, they make the African own, they make their abroad own. So we in the Africa will keep on taking Panadol five times, six times. But them over there, only two Panadol have cleared the headache. So try our pharmacy and get some drugs in Jesus' name. We have laundry department. Laundry department will stop all this excess washing in the camp. Go there, you will get for a good price. Go there and amend all this, your indecent dressing cloth that your back is out. They will, uh, sorry, they will wash all your clothes. I, I talk, I'm talking about the tailor department. The laundry department will wash your clothes and stop all this too much of washing. Please take your dress there. They will wash it for you and it's not too costly. Iron it very well for you in Jesus' name. We have tailor shop department. In the tailor department, you can go there and mend your indecent dress as we have had the message just now. All this short skirt, this open back, you can go there. The tailors are there. There were many for you. Or you can sew a decent dress before going patronize them in Jesus' name. Then we have clinic. Maybe you have heard about it. We have clinic. The same place. Go down a little. You can ask for holistic clinic. We have clinic. We have powerful machines that would scan you and tell you things that you are not aware that is growing in your body. Because this time around, people just die. Everybody is shocked. It's later that, oh, he was, they die of kidney or this. You will not know. Oh, sugar have shoot up. She never know that she was having diabetes sugar. So it is good for you to go and do f scanning. Go and pay. Don't love money more than your life. Go and pay. Let, them, let the machine check you and tell you, oh, be careful. You are having this. Oh, this. Watch out. And the good thing about it, after the machine I finish scanning you, it will prescribe and give you a good drug. So try our drugs. You will like it in Jesus' name. People are giving testimony about the clinic. Brethren are coming earlier from abroad. They are going there. They are giving testimony. So we that are here, let's try and get it in Jesus' name. We have bookshop. We have bookshop where we sell the ministry material. Please try to buy, <clears throat> try to get a book. For somebody, when you are going back, or even for your family, for your husband, by the grace of God, we have different books that have different titles that handle different spiritual matters in your life. If you want to know how to pray, if you want to know how to be pure, there are different books there about heaven, about hell. Books are there. So go and get one book. Be careful to your marriage because of heaven, how to manage your marriage, how to do things, how to train godly children or even a disobedient, or children are not obeying, they are disobedient, children are not born again. There are different books that are there. So please try to get one. Don't come here and go. Get one or two or three or you can even order. We can do way bill for you. Even if you are in abroad, you will pay the way bill, the way bill it for you, we will send it to you. Or you are in Nigeria, any side, you don't have time, your boss is going, just give us the list of books you want for evangelism or for your family member. Give it to the brother that is selling there. Telephone number, everything will contact you, how much it costs, and they will give you discounts if you are buying large quantity. So please, don't waste your money in other things, giving people wrong gifts, buying wrapper and be giving people. Try to be buying books and gift to people too as a gift in Jesus' name. Then we have the eat tree. Dying with Jesus. A new restaurant that they just launched. I think we started using it maybe December, if I can remember. But now it's looking more beautiful. The name is Dying with Jesus. Even the name alone will make you to go there. Go and sit with Jesus. Hallelujah. Go and sit as you are eating. In your spirit, man, the Lord will be discussing with you in Jesus' name. So go there, patronize them. They say, I should tell you, they have a different type of food there. They have a good sea of bono, fried rice, jollof rice, white rice and stew, goat meat, turkey, uh -huh, cow leg, anything. They have... Um, um, 
They have um, cake, meat pie, donuts, egg roll. They even have new type of bread they are doing there. We have a new brother from Cameroon that is making different delicacy of uh, cake. So try us and you will see. And then don't forget, we have the other department there too, which is canteen. As you know, they will be cooking different food, like the Igbo soup, white soup, all this kind of thing. Try there. And they have different swallow. Amala, wheat, semovita, semolina, and maybe they have this corn and, and, and cassava, as they call it. You see, toshinkafa or what? I don't know. They have it there. So you can make your order. The, the chef say, I should tell you, you can make your order for shawarma, for pizza, for burger, chicken and chips, fish and chips. They can do juice for you. We have ice cream there. Hallelujah. Amen. We have ice cream. We have a kunu. We have aya kunu. Many in that place. And even behind you where you are sitting, they are selling cold water there. They have cold drinks. They have cold kunu, cold yogurt behind you. So you don't need to go all the way outside where message is going on. You can just buy your cold water there, cold kunu, aya drink. They are selling it there in Jesus' name. So any other thing I omitted, they will bring it to you, to your notice, if they want you to know. We have POS in the camp. Don't say, hey, my money is in the bank, I can't pay offering or I can't buy a book. We have POS. So there are POS, I think the, the accountants have POS, the bookshop there, and the, and the shopping mall, they have POS. But just ask, I think I believe, maybe the eatery too, they will have POS that some of you don't have physical cash, but you can swap your card and pay. Amen? So there is POS in Jesus' name. And if you are thinking, foreign brother, you want to change your money, you can meet Pastor Raymond, the accountant. He will know what to do for you in Jesus' name. So this is all I have here to inform you. And may the Lord bless you all as you listen in Jesus' name. And as you do it in Jesus' name. The Lord is starting with us and the Lord will bless you all in Jesus' name. You have done me well. Sit down. Sit down. I'm not finished yet. Done me well. You have done me well. <coughs> oh, you have done me well. You have done me have done me well, Jesus. Amen. I have something to share with all of us for we to be happy in Jesus' name. Yesterday we, have, uh, we were having a meeting with our Father in the Lord from 7 until we finished past 11 in the night. So we were so tired. But because I want to prepare my message, I went up, I was preparing my message, and I finished at think past two in the morning, then I went to bed. Then during that time, I, I, I planned to wake up again to start my message, but when I woke up, it was after 6.30, I was still sleepy, I was still tired. Then I went back to bed. As soon as I, I dozed off, God gave me a vision. And in the vision, God wants me to let everybody know that he is in the camp. <laughs> in the name of Jesus. So in the vision, as the vision goes, the, the dream, I was standing by my door here. People were going up and down in the camp. And then I saw a personality coming by close to our coordinator site, Europe coordinator, Pastor Bright House, the Cove. I saw a man wearing white coming with an uh, group of people, but they were not in convoy, but there were many following him. And these same people that was following him, they put on gown, but not white like his own, and they tie a, a, like a ribbon in their waist, and then they carry a load on their shoulder. So as they were carrying the load, there were many, very many. 
So me, as soon as I saw them coming, my mind ran straight to hostel. I said, there's no hostel again. Where are these people? Where are we going to give them where to stay? So I was looking, I said, huh? These people, we, obvious, we need to give them space, but there are too many. Where can we? And when I look at them, they dress different. So I know that these are invitees, like people coming to the camp for the first time. So I was like, my own mind was like, where are we going to put these people uh, for hostel? So when he came, he was walking, he was leading them. By the side where people are uh, um, selling there, I saw him touching the head of children, playing with children. And then he will go into the shops, he will be peeping on food, watching what people are doing, like somebody that you are coming back home. Then I was just looking, I said, ah, who is this person? It's like you want to, like somebody that is checking things. But me, my own mind, all it was, oh, where are we going to lodge these people? Maybe they are coming, maybe it's visitors coming to daddy and seeing them, you know, they are coming from far. I was just contemplating, which hostel are we going to give them? There's no hostel again. What are we going to do now? So they came in this main gate. There was two lines, a group like this, a group like this. And then when they follow him, he was in, in front. They walked down close to this other entrance. I was standing here, so I was not seeing him again. I was just seeing the people following him because my eyesight cannot see through this side. But as soon as he reached this side, he now said, my daughter, tell the camp I have arrived. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Then I was shocked. Amen. Thank you. Then I said, ah. So I wanted to run, to go this side, to meet him by this side. I said, I want to see him face to face. Then he said, tell my son that this meeting is declared. This conference is a conference of purging. <laughs> Amen. Then I, then I said, ah, is that a team? Oh, Jesus, I've changed the team. He said, the team, the team that, 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 that daddy chose for the, the blessing of the tongue and the heart of a holy woman. He said, the team before him is purging the heart of the woman. And then he said to me that I have come to bless. Then as he went down like this, he went to the kitchen side. As he was going, children were running, passing, but, I'm, but as he, children were passing, I noticed he would touch them. He would like play with them like when somebody likes children, play with children, but the children would not know they would all be running. He went down to the kitchen side. He was peeping, looking at what people are doing. Everybody is doing something. They started walking like this. And then when he came down to the fountain side, he was standing there looking at the Jesus glory house. He was smiling, nodding his head, shaking. And then pe the same people were with him with this, with this log. And all of a sudden, it's like he just entered the hall. But it's like the dream changed in a way that when he entered the hall, it's like we are in the program already. So there's a woman that was sitting down. It's like maybe coming from this uh, northern, northern side because the way she dressed, she was putting on a tiny wrapper with this outside kind of half down cloth and carry a veil and put on her neck. This woman... She sat in her heart. She had a shoe she bought. She loved the shoes, but the shoes was not fitting her. But because she loved these shoes so much that she don't want to give her the shoe. She wants like miracle to happen that her feet will grow to fit in the shoes. So she held the shoes. She was just looking at the shoe that I love these shoes. So as she was there, Jesus was standing by her side and see how the woman was, he wished this thing, he loved this shoe, he won the shoe. Then all of a sudden, the Lord did his hand to one of the people that follow him, which I now know is angels, they are angels. Then they bring, they bring out a powerful shoe and then he fixed it in the feet of the woman. And then when he fixed it, at the feet, in that dream, the woman was sitting this side. This side, that is where the woman was sitting. So when he fixed it in the feet of the woman, he looked at the woman's feet. I too was looking at the woman's feet. Then I said to myself, I said, ha, ah, 
This shoe is very, very fine. But the woman's leg is not too posh for this kind of shoe. Because, you know, there are some people that have dry leg, you know, that when they wear fine shoes, it will not be too full. You know, women, we used to say, I ah, fine, no, but my leg is not looking good in it. Is it not so? So that was what I was like. I said, ah, it should have been a person that has floppy feet, that the feet be floppy and looking, you know, fear will fit. Then immediately I say that, the Lord now say, I will transform her. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Then he now, tra- then he was looking at it, then I now noticed the shoe was small into the size of the woman's leg, and then the shoe began to bring out like a power, and then the woman's body began to transform. The woman's body began to transform. Then I said, I said, wow, she's now looking more beautiful. In fact, the woman was looking more than a, like an Indian, more fine, more beautiful. I started looking at the woman, I said, Wow, the shoe began to change her. Change her. And then the Lord now says, she is not aware what I've done to her. But when she goes back, she will start seeing favor following her. Yeah. Amen. He said, you are admiring the shoe. And you have seen the way the shoe have. Because when the shoe transformed the woman. And now say, ah, this woman is looking like more than the governor's wife. He looked... Her body became changed like somebody that is living in, you know, like a rich person living abroad. The skin changed immediately. But she was not aware. She was busy clapping, singing like this. But she didn't know she has become another figure. She's looking. If you see her, you will not believe that she don't have money. So then I said, wow, she didn't even know that she have trans. This woman, if she goes, the husband will forget her. It's like somebody that's a young child that they want to, you know, want somebody want to remarry again. I was just looking at the woman. Everything changed. Her body, all the veins that was showing in her finger and her feet, the veins covered with flesh. She was looking young and fine. And then I said to myself, I said, wow, I like the way the skin is looking now. I was admiring the woman. Truly, I wish... It was me, that shoe was on my feet. And then Jesus said to me, and said, as you are admiring her, you are liking her. A person like this, where will this person go that people will not honor her? I said, God, this woman is looking, is more beautiful than maybe first lady. Because the woman's skin, I don't know how to, I want to describe it more for you to understand. It's any, you know, those kind of people, if you go somewhere, they will look at you and say, ah, this is a big madam. So this is how God transformed the woman. And then the Lord now said, as you are, as you, as you are rating her now, by you, you are saying she will be honored. This kind of people on earth that have this kind of skin, even in fact, she's more, more posh, more beautiful than even some first lady we know in the world. Then God now said, this is the blessing I've given her, that when she'll be going to places, people will be honoring her. She will be asking, what is happening to me? I notice things is changed because she will not know what I've done in her life, but later she will come to know that something has changed in my life. And then Jesus said to me, he said, I have lot of it. I have lot of blessing here. I have gifts for my children. Those that will truly be purged, those that will truly be seeking me to purge them, I will be, give them this gift. And the gifts were many. Amen. The remaining gift, I didn't see what was inside because it was wrapped, but only the shoe, when he beckoned like this, they brought up the shoe and gave it to him. But he told me that this is gift for my children. And then he said to me, 
that how he's rating this, this conference. He said, when my son chose this team, the team of this program, I looked at it and I was watching and looking at the wall. How will they see it? How will they take it? Because will people turn out for this kind of program? Will people, will my children really want to be cleansed? Because this team is a team of purging. When anybody that sees it will know that miracles and all these signs and wonders is not attached to this team. This team is a team of killing the flesh. That is how he rated it. So him, he was looking and said, let me see who will love to be in a program like this. Because what the world is giving to people today, how Satan has deceived them, people are going to program because of the team. When they put a team of miracle, blessings, signs and wonders, come and see this, come and do this, the power of God, people troop there. But him, God, is not happy with those teams. Because these teams are teams that are cajoling people to come. He wants people to love, to be purged, and he wants soldiers, not babes. That these teams that other churches, other people will be put in to get people, come and be blessed, the God of wonders, all these things, to make people to come, that, ah, it's going to be hard, see the team. The team is talking about signs and wonders. The team is talking about that people will come only for the miracles. Their hearts will not be to be purged. So when Daddy Rika came up with this team, he was happy for the team. But he want to see if truly, if truly, the children of God, people that call on his name, holy more members, or other people will want to come for a program like this. He said, but the children of God, he said, we, that people surprise him, that when the team came out, he noticed people were eager. His children were eager to come for the conference. And he began to see that we are laughing, that people begin to make, you know, gisting over the, the team and say, ha, huh, this time is going to be hot. Daddy is going to deal with us. We women are like talking too much. So, so when he was talking like this, I remember I said some things like that. I think when I went to my country, I was talking with my younger sister with the husband. The husband was saying, ah, daddy choose good team. This team, ha, huh, is going to handle women. You people with mouth will wear. Amen. And then when I came back, I was talking to one sister that she's helping me. I was telling her, I said, ha, this team this time is not funny. Oh, this, this team is like, daddy want to really deal with us. Then the sister was like, me too. When I saw the team, I was like, ah, this kind of team is, you know, we have never had teams like this in when we are going to church. This kind of team. He said, I was like, is it a mistake that daddy made? Which kind of team is it? So we are laughing that in this dream, Jesus was telling me that he is very happy that he never see us, we are angry with the team. That in fact, people were like, hey, they are going to, pun they are going to deal with us, we are coming to that program. Ah, that some people be telling their friend, you that talk too much, this conference is for you. That he is very happy that we are happy to come to purge ourselves. That many people don't go to a program with a team like this. And because we have decided, you see, troop of women, struggling to come under a team like this that some people when they see the team and say ah now only, only I can't go to this place but Jesus said to, to me that when people with all this team this kind of team that people are see trooping in he see people praying God give me money I want to go for the conference God please I want to be purged God please you know I have foxes in my life that, that he wants daddy and he wants us to know that he Jesus is very happy for our determination to come to be purged and he's ready to purge us in Jesus name then I was very happy I said God indeed truly we like the team we know it's not going to be easy it's a strong message because dealing with tongue women our tongue is not easy so I was like God we, we are ready anything and then Jesus said this is the church is building and he wants to appreciate our father in the Lord for building soldiers for him than other churches that are building babes by giving them milk, by cajoling them to serve God by, you will be blessed. 
miracle come to the church. But our Father in the Lord here is giving us strong word with all that strong word. We still made up our mind that no matter how, we will make it that he too have decided in this conference. As you determine to, to be purged and to be, you know, weep with the word of God that will break you. Anything killing flesh is hard. He said, I am ready to bless you abundantly. And then he's a roundup and said, Amen. As you finish with it, he said, I am so happy. I am in the calm. And then he turned to the And then he told Praise the Lord. Sorry for all this one, this, what they're happening. So, then he turned to the people, the, the men that follow him, and then he said, drop all the items here, the gift for my children. All of them came and dropped it. And when they drop it, he now said to them, amen. He now said to them, go and prepare. The program will soon be starting, and we want to be here in full. Immediately, he said like this, when these people bend down to drop the thing, I cannot tell what really happened. When they bend down, by the time they, they stood up, they raised up themselves, everybody changed into different attire. I saw some of them with warrior sword standing everywhere, some wearing different attire. I want you to shout. Oh, Father, we bless you. Lord Jesus, we worship you. Lord, we glorify you. God, I thank you. And I thank you. And then, all of them just change. Not all of them don't wear the same uniform. No. It's like when you enter in, in, the, in the barracks that everybody have different uniform. The marine soldiers have their uniform. So I came to know that they have different angels in different departments for different things. The few ones it was four that remained with him dressed the way he dressed. But just that day, they put a ribbon in their waist. And they were very gentle following him. Holding something in their hand. And him, he wear a bright, very powerful white gown that was just, he's not dragging on the ground, but just standing on top of his feet like this. And then the remaining ones scattered everywhere. And when they were standing, some were wearing this kind of um, robot kind of cloth. And they were moving up and down. And then he now told them that everywhere, everywhere he told them they should take uh, possession of everywhere. Dominion of everywhere. As soon as he said like this, I look up. I saw angels everywhere. I look at the camp. I saw angels everywhere. I begin to say, God, something is happening. In the name of Jesus, I want to thank God. And then he said to me, look at me with a smile and say, I am ready. Tell my son and announce to the camp, I am in the camp. And then I woke up. When I woke up, I was saying, Jesus is in the camp. Jesus is in the camp. I was saying to people in the camp, in the dream, 
As he said, tell the people, so I said, well, Jesus is in the camp. Daddy Rika that is sitting praying, say, amen, amen, amen. So I woke up. Hallelujah. So when I woke up, he said, ah, I heard him say amen. He said, ah, I said, was I praying? He now said, you were saying something. So I was saying, amen, I want to hear. Then I said, what I was saying? He said, you were saying Jesus is in the car. I said, yes, daddy. He told me to tell people. So in the dream, I was telling people, hey, Jesus is in the camp. Jesus is in the camp. So I want to inform to you as he said, the Lord, the I am that I am, the King of kings, the great I am that I am. Jesus is in the camp. Jesus is in the camp. I am telling you as you say, I should tell you, worship the King of kings. Worship the Lord. We are here. We are ready to be part. God, we give you praise. We give you glory. We worship you, Lord. Oh, God, we exalt you. Father, we bless you, Lord. You are Yahweh. Eh, eh. You are Yahweh. Oh, you are Yahweh. Eh, you are Yahweh. Jesus, you are. Omega, you are Yahweh. Alpha, Alpha, and Omega. You are Yahweh. Father, we worship you. We welcome you, Holy Spirit. We love you, Lord Jesus. We are here for you, Lord. We glorify you. Hey, you are Yahweh. Well, you are Yahweh. You are Yahweh. Alpha, Alpha. Papa, only you, Father. In Jesus. Only you can do. Jesus, what no man can do for us, Jehovah. Only you can do what no man can do, Jehovah. Amen. Mm. Amen. We are going to officially welcome Jesus. Mm. We want to hand over the camp unto him. We want to hand over the conference unto him. Are we ready for that? We want to hand over our lives unto him. Amen. Amen. Worship. Sweet Jesus. Sweet Jesus. How wonderful you are. You are brighter than the morning star. You are 
fairer, much fairer than the lilies that grow by the way. You are precious, more precious than gold. Sweet Jesus. Sweet Jesus. How wonderful you are. Hey, Jesus. You are the brighter than the morning star. You are fairer, much fairer. Than the lilies that grow by the way. You are precious. More precious than gold. Sweet Jesus, sweet Jesus, how wonderful you are. You are brighter than the morning star. You are fairer, much fairer than the lilies that grow by the way. You are precious, more precious than gold. We're talking about our creator, our maker, sweet Jesus. Tell Jesus, thank you for coming. Worship him. Tell him we are happy that he came. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for coming. We welcome you. We welcome you. We worship you. We adore you. We magnify you. Thank you, Lord. Worship. Thank you, Lord. Worship. You came to this conference that you may see Jesus. You came to this conference. You came to this conference. You came to this conference that you may see Jesus. You will see him. See him in this very conference. You will see him, see him, see him. You came to this conference that you may see Jesus. You came to this conference. You came to this conference. You came to this conference that you may see Jesus. 
you will see him see him in this very conference you will see him see him see him you came to this conference that you will meet jesus you came to this conference you came to this conference you came to this conference that you will meet jesus you will meet him meet him in this very conference you will meet him meet him meet him we came to this conference that we may see jesus we came to this conference we came to this conference we came to this conference that we may see jesus we will see him see him in this very conference we will see him see him see him we came to this conference that we may meet jesus we came to this conference we came to this conference we came to this conference that we may meet jesus we will meet him meet him in this very conference we will meet him meet him meet him amen you know we are going to do a wave a wave offering just happy with this eternal being that came from his eternity and created us can you wave hand at him just wave hallelujah lord we wave wave at you jesus hallelujah we worship we wave at you thank you for coming everybody in the camp outside inside everywhere my voice goes to just wave for this eternal being ha, our our the one that originated us the one that formed us for his glory worship ah lord we honor you lord we worship thank you we bless you ha ah, thank you lord thank you lord thank you lord in jesus holy name we pray our god has come our creator has come Amen. our savior has come Amen. our redeemer has come Amen. say bye bye to evil spirits bye bye to satan get out from here 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 open your mother and get him out get him out get out get out from here get out from here my god is around my authority my father my creator the owner of my life he's here now he's here now therefore you darkness i said get out i command you get out get out from this camp get out from this camp you cannot be in this hole by the power of god by the power of god get out from this place get out from this place command him command him remove him remove him remove him remove him out of your life remove him out of your way the creator is here our god our Mika, mighty jesus mighty jesus he is here don't allow him in your life don't allow him don't allow him don't allow him in your life Get him out of your life. Get him out of your life. Rebuke him. Cast him out. Cast him out of this camp. Not here. Not here. Not here. The glory of the Lord has taken over. The glory of the Lord has taken over. The glory of the Lord has taken over. Break. 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 Break all his power. Cut him off. Cut him off. Cut him off. Everywhere. Get him out.
the choir can be coming in. The choir can be coming in. Blessed assurance. Jesus is mine. Dear the organist. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Here of salvation, purchase of God. Born of his spirit, washed in his blood. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Yeah. Organist. Blessed assurance. Jesus is mine. Thank you. 
Son of God on earth. He died for our sins and resurrected because he's no man. Is the eternal God is here. He has come with his angels that are more in number than we. And so I want to introduce you to him. I want to hand you over to him. I want to hand over the conference to him. I want to make him aware of the composition of the people that are here. Although he knows, I still want to tell him. I want to tell him of the mixture that are before him now good and bad sinners and saints friends and enemies I want to let him know I want to let him know of faithful workers and defiled workers I want you to let him know those who come for his worship and those who have come here to honor Satan because they are sent to do evil I'm going to let him know about the choir standing before me. The nature of the choir. He knows them. I want to commit this, those in the media to him. Those working on our machines. Capturing. Those covering, video covering all this in the sound department. Let him know those working in the kitchen. Let him know about those who are in, in the security. Those who are rendering every kind of service for his name. Everybody close your eyes. I commit you to God. Almighty Father, we bless you for the presence of Jesus in this come. Lord Jesus, you have come with your entourage. Heavenly interage. You heard our prayers concerning this program. The prayers of your children. All the days. The fasting. You heard about it. You love us personally. Because this movement is you. You brought about this movement. The leadership of this movement is you. Father, we worship. Even your daughter that you gave vision to. God, you brought her up. We just bless you. We worship you. God of heaven. 
the God of the whole earth. You are the God of the spirits of all men. Lord, I worship. You are welcome to your people. You are welcome to the conference. You are welcome to holiness movement. Come. Lord, we worship. Be worshipped. Be worshipped. We join the angels and bow our head. Everybody bow your head. Worship. Creator. Glory. There's none like you. There's none like you. None like you. Worship. Lord, we worship you. I commit this conference to you. I commit this campground to you. Everywhere. To the hospital. Everywhere. God. The shopping complex. The water side. The bread side. The kitchen. The restaurants. Oh, everywhere. I commit to you. I commit the security. Unto you, Father. The ushers. Father, those in the media. I commit unto you. Lord, the elders, the overseers, I commit unto you everything. Lord, take over. In the name of Jesus. We worship. We bow before you. There's none like you. I'm happy myself. I bow to you. You are my God. God, this work, you're the one doing it. Jesus, we honor you. I have before me the choir who are the women leaders that are singing. I present these women to you. You know the stories about them. Stories about individuals of them. They are here now. God break every power of darkness in their life. In the name of Jesus. Oh Lord devour every power of the devil. Get out from these women. I say get out from these women. By the power of God break them. Destroy them. Destroy them. I crush you. All powers in these women. Contrary to God. Demonic power. Fire. 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 I said die. You darkness. Die. You darkness. Disappear. You devil. Get out. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Get tired from their lives. Get tired from their lives. Oh Lord, I sprinkle the blood of Jesus upon them. I soak them with the blood. I soak them with the blood. I bind their witchcraft. Whoever is in witchcraft among them, I bind their power. By the authority of Jesus, I destroy their power. Count it destroyed. By the power of Jesus, I say destroyed. By the name of Jesus, oh Lord, set them free. Set them free. No power to hurt anybody. No, they will not have meeting here. Meeting of darkness. Meeting of witchcraft. Can never be held in this camp. The Lord judge you. If you carry any evil thing, judgment is upon your life. Judgment is upon your life. Judgment is upon your life. Almighty Father, I go to the media. All agents of darkness in the media. That will be causing confusion. Send your angel there. Pick them by their neck. Arrest them. Arrest them. Break their power. Break their power. Break their power. Destroy their forces. All join forces in the media to cause this program not to go smoothly. To cause our machines to burn. To cause this to happen. I bite the spirit in the media. The Lord destroy it. I say I cast you out of that place. Devil, break your power in that place. In the name of Jesus. Oh, Father, the ushers, I bring them unto you. Every evil, every usher coming in witchcraft, today the Lord will discover you. God discover them. God discover them. Let your angels go on search and cast them out of this place. In the name of Jesus. 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 All security people. God. Any. Servant of the devil. That has joined the security man. God. Let your angel bind him. Bind him. We put but lock in his mouth. We put the chain of God upon him. Father, he is the first arrest. 
He is the first arrest in this camp. She is the first arrest in this camp. The presence of God is here. The presence of God is here. The presence of God is here. All those people that were hired for evil, you have come before the Creator and therefore receive. Receive His. Either you receive His love and, be, and become a child of God or receive His frown and judgment and curses will come upon you. Judgment and curses will come upon you. The Lord destroy your forces. The Lord judge plus the people that sent you. That company shall pass through judgment. That witchcraft group, occultic group, higher powers, the great, the one that is called power is here. I spread the power. I spread your power. I spread your power. I destroy your witchcraft. I destroy your witchcraft. By the power of Jesus, I crush all of you. All those things you are beginning to, to, to mount up here. I destroy them. And the Lord Pashi, the angels of God handle you. May the angels of God handle you. In the name of Jesus. Yes. All of you handling the Lord's instrument. And you are not clean. Just leave that instrument and go your way. You are not clean. Don't be here to, uh, to, to, to be used by the devil. Otherwise, God will be angry with you. Start repenting where you are. Start repenting where you are. You are You're handling the instrument of God. Jesus, now we pray. <laughs> Father, these people heard of you and came to be served. The devil wants to pursue them to block their salvation. Now, everybody go into warfare with Satan. Go into warfare with Satan. The Lord brought you here for your salvation. The Lord brought these people here for their salvation. <clears throat> Worship. Power is coming on you. Power is coming down. Power is coming down. Deal with the devil. Deal with the devil. Deal with the devil. Deal with the devil. Power must come. Power from above. Hallelujah when we call on Jesus. Power must come. Power must come. Power must come. Anointing must come. Anointing from the Lord. Hallelujah. When we call on Jesus, power must come. Yeah. The overseers humble the devil. You child of God everywhere, humble the devil. Humble him. Break his power down. Burn him with fire. Set fire on him and on his agents destroy them to far places to far places to far places you collapse in your far distance thank you jesus worship power must come power from the lord hallelujah when we call on jesus power must come power must come power from above Hallelujah, when we call on God, power must come, power must come, worship. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Sanctify our camp. Sanctify our conference. Chase them far away. Defeat them. Strike them down. Convert, convert many of them. Let them become children of God. Thank you, Jesus. Worship. 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 All powers and forces of evil. Destroy it. Destroy it. Destroy it. Destroy it. Destroy it in the kitchen. All those people in the kitchen, whoever has been poisoning food in the kitchen, fire upon you. Fire upon you. Fire upon the kitchen. Destroy them. By the power of God, break them down. Yeah, the Lord catch you. The Lord catch you. Wherever you are, 
child of the devil it is your time to be judged it is your time to be judged those demons surrounding you I bind those demons surrounding you I bind those demons surrounding you in the name of Jesus 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 Jesus holy name we pray everybody continue to shout the name Jesus let that name take over this place take over the camp take over this this town the whole of this city the name of Jesus the name of Jesus be calling that name the name of Jesus 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 everywhere Jesus 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 Jesus, everywhere, every room, every room, every room. Jesus, everywhere, every soul. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. In Jesus name we pray we are in the presence of Jesus you are in the presence of Jesus be glad you will be free you will be loosed you will be blessed be happy, be happy. When we come into your praises, we're so happy, we're so happy. Ah. Breaks the yoke when we come into your presence we are so happy we are so happy ah. lord we are in your presence lord we are in your presence there will be liberty there will be breakthrough anointing will break the yards when i come into your presence i'm so happy I'm so happy. I'm so glad. Worship. Thank you, Lord. In presence of God. We are in the presence of the maker. It's done. <laughs> Worship. Today is the day. The day of Jesus in your life. I say today is the day, the day of Jesus in your life. Rejoice! Amen. Whoa. Amen. 
today in your life, sister. The day of Jesus. Amen. Wait for him. He will touch you. The Lord will bless you. I say today in your life, sister. The day of Jesus. Amen. I say today is the day, the day of Jesus in your life. Amen. Sing amen. Sing amen. Sing amen. Sing amen. Sing. I say today in your love, brother, the day of Jesus, amen. Release yourself to him. Today in your love, Satan is no more, amen. Oh yeah. Sing amen. Sing amen. Sing amen. Sing amen. Sing. Amen. I say this conference is your day. The day of Jesus is your life. Watch it. I say this conference is for your life. The day of Jesus is your life. Sing amen. Sing amen. Rejoice amen. Rejoice amen. Be glad amen. Rejoice amen. Be glad amen. Quiet. We are, present, we are representing francophone countries. We have a special number for the, to the glory of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Comment te dis que je ressens tes bienfaits sont trop grands du fond de mon âme de l'âme qui traduit mes silences comment te dis que je ressens tes bienfaits sont trop grands du fond de mon âme court de l'âme qui Traduis mes silences Que ma vie soit une fleur Un parfum pour toi Que ma vie soit une fleur Un parfum de bon odeur Devant toi, je me répands. Fais de moi ce 
from the United States of America. Is America in the house of the Lord? Is America in the zoo? Prepare to be purged in the name of Jesus. Amen. I bring you greetings from Europe, England, and Wales in Jesus' name. As the Lord has brought you to this conference, please open your heart to the world. You will be blessed. You will be cleansed. You will be washed. You will be sanctified. And the Lord will bless and honor you in Jesus' name. Burton from Jamaica bringing greetings on behalf of the Caribbean countries. Yeah, man. Holiness Revival Movement Worldwide. In Abuja, Nigeria, present Women Conference 2024. You can watch it on YouTube. Remember the one when you're on Facebook. No forget Zoom. You can TikTok it too. I invite you all, come receive your blessing, yeah man, from all of the Caribbean country, God bless you now. Greetings from the Philippines, hallelujah. Binabati ko mga kababayan ko mga Pilipino, kay San Solo kayo sa ating bansa. Ay inanyayahan ko po kayo lahat. Manood, sumali po kayo sa hori mo. Ma Alain po tayo. Ito po yung pangarap ng Diyos po sa ating lahat. Magkikipag-isa po tayo. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. I bring you greetings from Italy. And I want to greet you in Italian language. Mukama agenda to kola mo muli mu agenda to chusa agenda to chusa enemy adu full abo muli ro tu yingiro waka 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 tonda banange mutule temu sa sagana muja agenda mukul muri nyeri a Yesu Amina. Greetings to you from Francophone countries. Soyez les bienvenus les Francophones. La conférence des femmes internationales du mouvement mondial de réveil de la sainteté. Nous vous invitons à être connectés à ce programme grâce qu'elle est et nous prions que vous recevez de grands miracles, de prodiges. Le Seigneur ne va pas vous manquer. Il est toujours prêt pour vous bénir. Soyez connectés alors pour être perfectionnés, changés, transformés au nom de Jésus. Amen. I bring you greetings from West Africa and I want to greet you in the Ghanaian language. Me mamunina akwaba ediba ema enshie muimu. Eradi shira munina me mpai bonise. Eradi benam na samso aye ye ye. Ewo Yesu Christo dimu. Amen. Good evening everyone. I bring you greetings from West Africa and I'll be greeting you in our Sierra Leone language. I'll be greeting you in Creole. Mi people la una kusheo. I tell una the last and say baku baku blessing then a holiness movement. And I want follow una no say this 2024. Bere bere wonderful we all. So let you clean your heart, clean your mind, guide your lip because God in blessing. He there for we all baku baku one. God bless you in Jesus name. Thank you. 
birane mukawo jama'a zuwa hore mo kada a bar su a baya kada manta da su ubangije Allah ya kawo mu a cikin sunan Yesu I bring you greetings from Taraba state of Nigeria in the Drikas dialect Sukoni
Let's rise up upon our feet. Rise up in worship. As your creator is looking into your heart. To see what he would do with that heart. But he is saying, my son, my daughter, give me your heart. Give it to him. <clears throat> Open your mouth and say, Lord, I give you my heart. I give you my tongue. Tell him, I give you my heart, I give you my tongue. I give you my heart, I give you my tongue, oh Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you, Heavenly Father. For bringing your daughters to this International Holiness Women Conference 24. God, you have already declared unto us, you are here. Thank you for coming. You are the one to do the things yourself. You are the one to set them free. To purify them, to patch them, and to give them new natures and holy hearts. You are the one to renew their tongue, cleanse it, and fill it with your word. Father, let's go. Continue your work among us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You are welcome to this conference. It is the Lord that has brought you here to meet with him, to see him. All that is going on here is original. There's nothing fake here. The prophecies you have received is true. The presence of the Lord is real. Not only in word, it manifests in presence. If you want to see, you will see it. I'm talking to you on the connection and fruits of the heart and tongue. The connection and fruits of the heart and tongue. There is a connection between the heart and the tongue. The tongue only speaks what the heart possesses. What the heart gives the tongue to speak. Yes. And we are going to consider scriptures to know what the scripture has to say about the connection between these two, the tongue and the heart, the heart and the tongue. In the book of Matthew, chapter 12, Matthew chapter 12, I read verse 33. Either make the tree good and his fruit good or else make the tree corrupt and his fruit corrupt For the tree is known 
by his fruit. A tree is known by his fruit. They are bitter trees. They are known by bitter fruit. Sour trees, known by sour fruits. But the sweet trees, known by sweet fruits. A tree is known by its fruits. Similarly, the heart of a man stands for the tree, and the tongue of the man stands for the fruits. Your heart as a woman is revealed by what you say, except you choose to play hypocrisy. But there are times you can be put in a condition you may not play hypocrisy. In fact, human beings have known how to put somebody in a condition, especially those who are getting information from people. Those who are getting sensitive information, maybe from hardened criminals, they can put them in a condition in which, unconscious to themselves, they will be speaking. They will be speaking. The heart, the tongue will be speaking reality, not playing hypocrisy anymore. We listened to this occultic man some time ago who said, they put him in a condition in which he was speaking out, even unconsciously, because they wanted to get information outside his senses. So, many times, outside your senses, or right in your real senses, you speak what is in your heart. Yes. And when the heart is evil, the mouth cannot speak good things. Except he is just speaking hypocrisy. He's just acting. And that still is the condition of the heart. The heart is fraudulent. The heart is trickish. The heart is playing sensual wisdom. Carnal wisdom. That is why what you are saying does not represent it. Is sending out falsehood. That is a heart of falsehood. Is bringing forth good mouth of the good treasure of the heart. Bring it forth good things. And an evil man, out of the evil treasure, out of the evil treasure, bring it forth evil things. That's what the world is saying. The good heart, the evil heart. The evil heart, the good heart. The evil heart possesses an evil tongue. The good heart possesses the good tongue. That's what the scripture makes us to know. Those with evil heart possess all about me. So with that, the heart is poisoned. The man is poisoned. Yes, can become sick. The blood pressure may rise. Why? He has heart and evil thing. Look at it in the book of Psalm. Chapter 12. I mean Psalm 12. I read verse 1 to verse 5. Help, Lord. For the godly man sees it. For the faithful fell from among the children of men. The Lord has to bring you to tell you this because righteousness is fading away from the church. Righteousness is fading away from even the holiness community because of the tongue of what the tongue says. Because of what the tongue does in the church, in the family, in the community. Woman, 
there is something you said to your husband and that they closed up your husband to you. You can't find him again. Because it was so poisonous, it affected him. It overpowered him. It wounded him. He kept it in his heart and resigned from you. The tongue is an unruly evil. Help, Lord, for the God in the church. It has affected brethren in the church, in the society. Even those that are doing well, if they hear what the people say about them, they recoil. They coil back and stop doing what they're doing. The good thing they were doing. The godliness they were manifesting. The good works they have been showing. But when they hear what the tongue of others are saying about them, say, is that so? I am doing this thing with sincerity. I am doing this thing to glorify God and to bless them. Did not Moses run away with all his good intention from Egypt when he thought that what he was doing was for good, was to bless his, his brethren. But one of them came to say, Who make it thee a lord or a judge over us? Ah, I thought that you people are rejoicing that being in Pharaoh's house, I have authority to protect you. Being in Pharaoh's house, you will have advantage of me. So this is how you are talking? You are now seeing me protruding? Ah, your, this thing has prayed. I cannot stay. He ran away. The tongue. I told a story. It was a story of a goodly man of God that was pastoring a church and somebody a woman talked to a fellow woman and said our, our pastor is handsome beautiful the way I see this man many women are falling for him in the church now the tongue a little member set it the nature, the whole set the whole world on fire. That word set that church on fire. Said by a woman, just one person. The woman is here. The woman is here. That say things that destroy the church. That will not hold her peace will not submit her life to God to sanctify, but speak evil. Then, the second woman I had from her friend told another woman, this sister told me that our pastor is falling, many women have fallen for our pastor in this church. Because he is a handsome man. The, remember the story has changed now. It's going. But it started from you. Because you can't bridle your tongue. It started from you. The little fire is increasing. Many materials have been put into it to burn. Until the house will collapse. Then the, th the third woman took it to another pastor goes with many women to the hotel. It's cheap to find them because they're falling for his, on his beauty. Then another woman, pastor has slept with all women in the church. The pastor's wife was not aware of life. The tongue. Everybody, tell Jesus who has come. Lord, my tongue will not go back the sun. Say it. Say 
it loudly. That is why we are discovering the, the seat of the tongue, the inspiration of the tongue. We say it is the heart. So it means something has to be done with your heart. Is responsible for this evil. Now, are you united in your churches? Are you, women, are you united there? Has the tongue not burned up that place? Has the tongue not damaged even the leaders over you? Has the tongue not discouraged the pastor? Discourage everybody. The God of heaven is, has come himself. Accept that you will be pushed. Accept. Agree. Don't say, I am a godly woman. The Bible says, if anybody says he's religious, and bridled not his, her tongue, that man's religion is in vain. Your high esteem in godliness is vanity. Because of your tongue. The evil it is doing. Help Lord. For the godly man Caesar. For the faithful fell from among the children of men. They speak vanity everyone with his neighbor. With flattery lips. And with a double heart. Do they speak? The Lord shall cut off all flattery lips. And the tongue that speaketh proud things. Who have said with our tongue we will prevail. Our lips are our own. Who is Lord over us? For the oppression of the poor. For the sighing of the needy. Now will I arise. saith the Lord. I will set him in safety. From him that put faith at him. That's what the Lord is saying. The psalmist is crying. That. People now are speaking vanity one to another. They form groups in the church. They form group. They form a, a, a clique. And it is, what have you gone, gotten today? Bring it, let us, let us chew together. What information have you received? Bring it, let us chew it together. It's sweet. And the information is about a sister. The information is about a man, the husband of a sister. The information is about who? The pastor. I tell you another story. If dealing with the wife well, the man is dead now, but the wife is still alive anyway. Dealing very well with the wife, buy clothes for her, took good care for her. But women gathered somewhere and these women were speaking against their husbands. That man, man is wicked. We're just managing. I would have packed out of that house since. It's just because of my children, that's why I'm there. This one talk, this one talk. You see me? This wrapper I'm, I'm wearing now, I'm tying now. I've been tying this wrapper for the past five years. The man never bothered about me. It's my brother that even sent it. The man never bother. And this woman, her husband is not so, but she is in a family of gossip. She found herself in a family of gossip. And she must say something to keep that group going on. Everybody is bringing her, her portion. She must bring her portion too. But my husband is not like that. Don't say it here. They will squeeze you. They have already concluded that men are bad. Will you come and say you have a good one? She said, even my husband too. Man, terrible. He doesn't care for me. I'm talking about the tongue. Will you go to heaven? With the people that all husbands are the same. All husbands. Even when the Lord has made your husband different. Even when the Lord has shown righteousness in your husband. No. You sit, still stay as women. Other women. Help, Lord. For the godly women sees from among men. God has come himself here to do a new thing in your life. 
to liberate you from this power. To break this yoke in your life. That there be peace in your home. Yes. The tongue speaketh evil things. The tongue speaketh. They oppress one another. They oppress the poor. They feel great. So you who are under them, they make nonsense, nonsense of you with their tongue. You can't join them in their class. They pulled you down by their tongue. They oppress the poor. They oppress the needy. They say, our tongue is our own. We will use it the way we want. You can, they can move to the pastor and begin to speak evil of another person. Just to make themselves great. Our tongue is our own. We will use it the way we want. That is what they do. Your tongue is your own. Who is Lord over you? Who controls you? Who guides you? Whom do you bother about? Whom do you fear? That's what they say. But the Lord will cut you off. The Lord will cut off the flattery tongue. They praise people just because they have double heart. One heart is for evil. One heart is for, is for good. But hypocritical good. Praise people with flattery lips. Hey, you are wonderful. Hey, you are nice. Hey, pastor, nobody like you. Oh. But you have come here for another thing. You have come here for anti-ministry. To do evil here. But you use your tongue. You use your tongue to show as if you are a friend. You are not. That's what the Bible is telling us. With flattery leaves. That's how they use their tongue. The tongue is a sharp sword. Psalm 57 verse 4. Psalm 57. I read verse 4. The Bible tells us the tongue, the tongue, the tongue. Yeah. My soul is among lions. And I lie even among them that are set on fire. Even the sons of men whose teeth are spears and arrows and their tongue a sharp sword. This man is confessing. What is he saying? My soul is among lions. This godly woman, see her mourning. My soul is among lions. I am in a church where the women there are like lions. They are like lions. Yes. Yeah. I lie and I lie even among them that are set on fire. Even the sons of men whose teeth are spears and arrows and their tongue is sharp sword. I'm lying among people that kindle fire to burn. Their teeth sharp, their teeth sharp. It can pierce through your heart. Their weights are like swords that can, can cut you, cut you off, cut, damage your life. I lie among lions. God wants to save his church from these lionesses whose teeth are sharp and their tongues like razor. The teeth like, are like spears that can pierce through. Is that you? Are you the lioness in the assembly of God that will declare all in that assembly sinners and you are better than them? You can reveal the faults of all of them and crucify them. Only you are left. You kill all of them. 
you kill all of them. See what cry others are having about you. Woman. Description, you are a lioness. In the church, yes, you are a fire. In the church, yes, your teeth are like spears that can pierce through. And your tongue sharp like a razor. Are you the one described here? You will tell the Lord to give you a new nature. You will tell the Lord to forgive you and change you. The tongue. The evil the tongue is doing. Terrible. The evil the tongue is doing. The tongue can speak crafty. Job 15. Job chapter 15. I read verse <clears throat> the tongue very crafty. Very, very crafty. Verse 5. Yes. Yeah. You show your Christianity with your tongue. You speak crafty. Give testimonies that are not true. You give testimonies. And those testimonies are not true. Whose harvest the hungry eat it up and make it even out of the tongues. And the robbers Swallow it up their substance. I got it wrongly. Okay, chapter 15. I was reading chapter 5. Yes, Job chapter 15. Yes. For their mouth uttereth thine iniquity. For thy mouth uttereth thine iniquity. And thou choosest the tongue of the crafty. You are righteous by your tongue. The testimonies you give are not true. But you have used them to exalt yourself. You have used them to promote your Christianity. Crafty tongue. The dream you never dreamed. You said you dreamed them. The voice you never heard. You said the Lord spoke to you. You said the Lord spoke to you. The tongue of the crafty. Very crafty. They're intelligent. They know how to maintain their rapport. Maintain their position. Maintain friendship. Relationship with crafty tongue. Not original. Hypocritical. That's the use of the tongue by others. It comes from the crafty heart. A heart of Satan. Now the devil was more crafty than any... The serpent was more crafty than any beast the Lord has made. Crafty. Showing that he knows. He has information of truth and it's a lie. That's the tongue. On, yes. God is telling you this. He wants you to know yourself because you can't continue like that. He would do something about you if you don't do something about yourself. In Psalm 64, verse 3. Psalm 64. Let's read from verse 1. Hear my voice, O God, in my prayer. Preserve my life from fear of the enemy. Hide me from the secret counsel of the wicked. From the insurrection of the workers of iniquity. Who weight their tongue like a sword. And bend their bows. And bend 
their bows to shoot their arrows, even bitter weights. Some of you inherited this thing from your mother or from your family. Your family knows how to abuse. A, a lecturer was telling me that I don't know how to speak the Hausa language, but I know how to abuse in it. You know how to abuse a person. That when you speak, your words are bitter salt. They're bitter words. And that's what you speak to your husband. How are you expecting love in that house? How are you expecting peace? That's how you speak to your children. You choose words that will put bitterness into their lives. They won't forget it. If something enters into your body by force, the pain of that thing will last. It will not quench immediately. It entered in by force. It's going to leave a sensation of pain for long if it will be healed. See the way you speak to your husband. Bitter words. You bend your mouth like bend your mouth to shoot like a bow. To shoot it at your husband. At your husband. You shoot those words. The man has to leave the house. He has, he has to, he cannot bear. <clears throat> you don't have the power, he has the power. But you have the ways, he doesn't have the ways. As you speak, the unbelieving husband gives it to you. Bah! He beats, you speak, he beats, you speak, he is tired, he left the house. Where must he kill you? So, this is evil tongue. This is evil tongue. It comes from the evil heart. Who wet their tongue like a sword that you sharpen it, sharpen a sword, sharpen a knife so that it will be able to cut very well. You sit down and bring out evil weights. You imagine evil weights. What you will say to that sister, you sharpen your tongue like a man sharpened a knife. What you are going to say to that pastor, you have planted. You have planted. You have planted. And that's where battle is going on between you and that person. Battle of weights. You are going to drop your equipment here. You are going to drop your weapons here. And go back a changed woman. You that false tongue. Why are you disturbing your sister? Why are you inconveniencing the church? Why are you decreasing the church? Thou false tongue. In the book of Psalm 79, 73 rather, Psalm 73, verse 8 and 9, Psalm 73, verse 8 and 9, they are corrupt and speak wickedly concerning oppression. They speak loftily. They speak proudly. Hmm. You are proud. You know how to speak proudly. To show how great you are. How higher you are than any other person. The tongue is your own. The money you don't have, you say you have. The things you have not done, you say you did it. Because you know how to speak. And Raise up yourself high. And again the Bible says, they, verse, verse 9, they set their mouth against the heavens and their tongue walketh through the earth. 
God. Blame God. God, what do you think you are? God, what have I done to you? God, why didn't you do this? Somebody was speaking to me about a sister of his that has not married. And he said, God is responsible. In fact, because he has, she has not married, God is responsible. In fact, he, he has declared that there is no God. No God. If, he's, if there is God, why has she not married? Madness. You set your tongue against God. Every blame is God you are giving it to. Everything that is wrong in your life, you don't even examine yourself to know that you are the one it would fall. No, it's God. It's God that is wrong. Or it's another person. No, I'm not the one. You will never accept your fault. It's the other person. You know that this thing you are faulting. No, you are the one. You know how to twist the thing. You, the, your tongue is your own. Who is Lord over you? Who can command you? Who can judge you? God will judge you. God will handle you. I will cut off flattery tongue. You have oppressed enough people. God will rise up to defend them. Child of God, all those false things against you, the Lord will rise up and defend you. He will judge for your sake. Yes. For these people. What God didn't ask you, you tell people that it was God. Their tongue has set against, his tongue is set against heaven. You are now lying that God was the one who sent you. You want to break somebody for money? He said, God asked me to see you. You want to marry somebody? Say, God, God reveals you to me. Their tongue is set against God. That's why the Lord is angry. Oh, false tongue. Psalm 120, verse 1 to 7. Oh, false tongue. What can be given to you? How should you be quietened? What should your judgment be? Oh, false tongue. Psalm 120 from verse 1 to 7. In my distress, I cried unto the Lord and he heard me. This man, they used tongue against him. And they put him into confusion. Into pain. Every kind of lie. Criticism. Gossip. Backbiting. Accusation. Landed upon this person. Landed upon this woman. And she, she said, in my distress, I was in pain. I was in sorrow. In my distress, I cried unto the Lord, and he heard me. God will hear your prayers. Yeah. All of you that they want to destroy, through the tongue, the lying tongue, the deceitful tongue, the tongue of false witnesses, they have raised up such tongues against you. May the God of heaven loose you from their, their grip. May the God of heaven defend your life. The pit where they have thrown you into, the God of heaven raise you up from that pit and let your enemies replace you. Yes. In my distress. Because they battered me with their tongue. In my distress, I cried unto the Lord, and he heard me. He heard me. Deliver my soul, O Lord, from lying lips and from deceitful tongue. What shall be given unto thee? Oh, oh what shall be done unto thee? Thou false tongue in that woman that tongue, that evil tongue, the rich man, the tongue that spoke to women when he was alive, the tongue that spoke and got, got fraudulent money, that tongue was set on fire, on fire of hell. Repent, otherwise your tongue will be set on fire of hell. Yes. 
what shall be given unto thee, or what shall be done unto thee, thou false tongue, sharp arrows of the mighty, with calls of juniper. You use it as an instrument to fight, to destroy, to hurt people, to promote yourself. That is what is being asked you. Woe is me that I sojourn in Mesek, that I dwell in the tents of Kedar. My soul had long dwelt with him that hated me. My soul had long dwelt with him that hated peace. I am for peace, but when I speak, they are for war. I speak peace. I'm looking for peace. When I greeted her, it was for peace. But the answer that came back was war. The answer that came back was war. I went to visit her because she was sick. And I spoke with sincere of comfort to her. But the answer that came back to me was war. Oh Lord Most High. You brought this woman to change them. And this woman who has problem with her tongue. Oh Lord divine. Let it start today. I say let it start now. Go back to Matthew chapter, t- Matthew chapter 12. Matthew chapter 12 verse 33 and 34. Either make the tree good and his fruit good or else make the tree corrupt and his fruit corrupt for the tree is known by his fruit. Oh, generation of vipers. How can ye, being evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaketh. A good man, out of the good treasure of the heart Bring it forth good things. But what about the good woman? That the heart is good. It is a sweet tree. The fruits will be sweet. A woman who has a nice heart, her ways will be nice. Her ways will be beautiful. Her ways will communicate love. Her ways will heal wounds because her heart is good. She will have a good tongue. The virtuous woman who is a godly woman among the people showed the nature of her good heart through kind ways. In the book of Proverbs, Proverbs, I read chapter 31, verse 10. And verse 26. Who can find a virtuous woman? For her price is far above rubies. Her price is virtuous. It's a goodly woman. This is a woman God has worked on. This is a woman that has received a gracious heart from the Lord. The Lord has cleansed her. Can we find them in our church? Did you find her, not hypocritical one who have double hearts, did you find this sincere woman around you? Are they found Do you have a friend like this? Because they are very scarce. They are very scarce. That's why the Lord brought you here. To increase the number of these women. You will join them. I say God is going to make you virtuous. You are going to join them. They are very few. You can't easily come at them. People whose heart has been worked on. People that God has tempered with them has deposited the grace of God in their hearts. 
years. Verse 26. She opened her mouth with wisdom. And in her tongue is the law of kindness. With wisdom. She's gentle. She's humble. She's under, she is understanding. She knows what words can do. She chooses her words. She does not have a heart ready to destroy somebody. She has not gotten the heart of revenge. God has removed it. That has found grace in the sight of God. Born again. Sanctified. The heart of love is in her. And love doesn't do evil. She would do her husband good and not evil. Not these ones that have torn their husbands to pieces. They have no good words. Any pain steers up terrible words from them. Any lack steers up terrible. Any shortcoming steers up terrible words. No, not her. I'm talking about ones Jesus has walked upon. She opened her mouth with wisdom. The wisdom of God. The wisdom of righteousness. The wisdom of love. The wisdom of truth. She's able to bear. Abuse her. She will not give you back abuse. Trample her on the feet. She will not push you down. No, she will not. Her heart is not wounded. Her heart is not wounded. She's even checking up. Oh, you match me. Sorry, I put my leg in a place you match. Maybe I'm wrong. I, I didn't put my, I, I put my, heart, my leg in a bad place, in the wrong place. Sorry for, my, for putting my leg or my feet in a wrong place or my foot in a wrong place and it, you matched it. Sorry. Who can find her? Who can find her? I wish all husbands were here to ask them, have they found that type of wife that's not hurting their hearts, that's not causing them to burn, that is not be causing them to feel little in their eyes, that will not use their tongue to promote them and belittle their husbands. I wish I should ask the husbands. I should ask them. Yes. I wish I should ask husbands. Who you are to them. I wanted to check this choir. So that not everybody should come and sing here. We are looking for righteous people. Not sinners. Not stubborn people. I caused a form to be filled by the husbands, the leaders. In, the, in your pure conscience, can your wife sing here? Some came up to say, no, I disqualify her. She can't sing here. She's not submissive. You're not submissive to your husband at home. It's the church you want to show. Who told you that this church is for show? To show the cloth you're wearing? Or for fellowship among women who are stubborn. Fellowship of stubborn women. Who will not yield to their husband and want to pollute our, pul our pulpit? Who told you? Is this Satan that came here or Jesus? We want to ensure you are well behaved at home. To your husbands. If to a godly husband you can behave like that, how much more? to an unbelieving husband. And yet you come before the Lord and lift up your tongue to heaven. Who can find a virtuous woman whose life has been changed? The life has been changed. Her spirit is changed. She would do her husband good and not evil all the days of her life. 
She recognizes she's a woman. And a woman is under man. She was taken out of man and subject to that man. So, the Lord brought you here to recover the glory of God in women. It is end time. Satan is doing their best, his best in his kingdom. Women are being lifted up from the seat God gave them. They are now standing like men. So that nobody is the one leading. And Satan likes that. Because that is disorderliness. It will cause the man to sin. As Eve caused Adam to sin by Satan. By making you disobedient, your husband will burn in pain. It might make him slip off into wrong actions and be condemned before God. This is end time. This is end time. And Satan is using various strategies to do it. All these trousers that women are wearing, or you call them pants in some other places, that to bring them to the level of man, what man can do, women can do, is very costly to the spiritual life. These churches that allow these women to wear trousers can never arrive at where Jesus is. They can never arrive at righteousness. Never. They can never arrive at true, at true marriage and true family. It's not possible. Because the, men, the women are standing up like men. Yes. The women are standing up like men. Righteousness is affected. Truth has failed. And so God has brought you here to handle your heart and your tongue and make you virtuous. What are you to do now? Make yourself available for God has come for you. Let him do special work for he will want to use you. God has come to you. God wants something genuine in your life. God wants truth. So, he will help you to make your heart good. God will help you to make your heart good. Make the tree good and its fruit also its fruit shall be good. So, God will make your heart good. Every woman and every man, even you too now, you're here. Say, God will make my heart good. Say it again. Say it again. Hallelujah. In Isaiah chapter 6. Isaiah chapter 6 from verse 1. The Bible says, In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon a throne high and lifted up. And his train filled the temple, his glory. Above it stood the seraphims. Each one had six wings. With twin, he covered his face. And with twin, he covered his, uh, his feet. And with twin, he did fly. And one cried unto another and said, Holy! Holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the posts of the door moved at the voice of him that cried. And the house was filled with smoke. 
physical small. In the Old Testament, you will see physical manifestation of God, manifestations of God in various ways. But here in our time is the just shall live by faith. For we walk by faith and not by sight. We know our God is here in all glory with all his angels. He's seated here. He's seated here manifesting his holiness. Manifesting his power. His eyes are looking to you. As I'm talking, he's looking at some particular women. She kn he knows them. They're doing damage to their family. They're doing damage to the church. They're doing damage to the neighborhood, to the society. He's looking at them. He's looking at them. Seeing what shall be their response. Will they come to him? Will they feel guilty as this world is going on? Will they feel guilty? As this world is coming to them. Or they will defend themselves and say, we are women leaders. Is it women leadership that takes to heaven? Is it women leadership that makes holy? Will you repent of your love, of your angry heart that brings forth bad speech, rough language? Can you do something that when you go back, your husband shall be filled with joy? That God has done it. That God has changed you. That when you go back home, your parents shall rejoice. Your friends, the place you walk, will say, what? Something has happened. Will you respond? So, I saw, I saw the Lord. I heard the voice of holiness. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full, is filled with his glory. But, I am dark. My tongue has affected me. See what he said. Then said I, ah, in verse 5, Isaiah 6, Woe is me, for I am undone. Because I am a man of unclean lips. Can you see? This man even talking, how much woman? When a man speaks a thousand words, I think the woman is 10,000. And if the man with few words of thousand can simply say he has oh, his lips, he's a man of unclean lips, why would you say your own? Woman, hey, you are a woman with a house of uncleanness. A house filled with uncleanness. Because of your lips. Because of your mouth. Because of your tongue. Woe is me, for I am, a, I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips, your friends. Your friends. Your friends. The, man, the woman you make to be your friend is not a child of God. It's a defiler. That's why you cannot be holy. The woman that brings information to you, pastor's wife, that woman is not a child of God and has made you unclean. I was wondering when they told me that the wife of a prominent man of God became a witch. I said, how? How? What, what made that woman to become a witch? Surely she was not. Surely she was not. But what did she become? How did she become? A woman was there. In that same place. 
walking in that church environment, church office, that was her friend. This woman siphoned God out of her life. This woman removed Jesus from her life by telling her stories, making her to believe lies, teaching her criticism, making her bitter towards other women, making her to speak in her and her morale collapsed. Her righteousness collapsed before God. And then witches picked her and joined her with, her, with their society. She couldn't defend anymore. God was not there to protect her life anymore. A woman of God, of international repute, became a witch in the afternoon. Not from her youth. Not from her childhood, but in ministry. Wow! Is the women you allow to tell you stories? They are not children of God. They are agents of darkness. They are sent with ways that will weaken you, ways that will put anger into you, ways that will corrupt your life, corrupt your heart, and corrupt your tongue. And then God leaves you. Because Delilah has taken over Samson. Tell me where your secret is. Tell me where your secret is. And he told Delilah. And where the secret is. And Delilah walked upon him. Walked upon him. Walked upon him. Until when Delilah came finally to say, Samson, the Philistines are upon you. He said, I will rise as at that time. But he didn't know the spirit has left. You don't know the spirit will leave you? Did you buy God? People buy idols. Did you buy the living God? That he means you. What how much did you pay? Do they buy God? It's grace he called you. It's grace he gave you ministry. It's grace he gave you gift. It's grace he gave you the position. You go after foolishness. Woe is me, for I am undone. Because I am a man of unclean lips. And I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. And they taught me unclean lips. I became unclean as they are. This man that is talking. He's a prophet. Hear his prophecy before this time in Isaiah chapter 1. Isaiah chapter 1, verse 1. The vision of Isaiah, the son of Amos, which he saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem in the days of Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, kings of Judah. See him speaking. Hear, O heavens, and give ear, O earth, for the Lord hath spoken, for the Lord has spoken. I have nourished and brought up children, and they have rebelled against me. The ox knoweth his honor, and the ass his master's creep. But Israel doth not know. My people doth not consider. Ah, sinful nation, a people laden with iniquity, a seat of evil doers, children that are corrupters. They have forsaken the Lord. They have provoked the Holy One of Israel unto anger. They are gone away backward. Why should ye be stricken anymore? Ye will revolt more and more. The whole head is sick and the whole heart faint from the sole of the foot even unto the, unto the head. There is no soundness in it but wounds and bruises and putrefying souls. They have not been closed, neither bound up, neither bonified with oil. Your country is desolate. Your cities are burned with fire. Your land, strangers devour it in your presence. And it is desolate as overthrown by strangers. And the daughter of Zion is left as a cottage in a vineyard. 
as a lodge in a garden of cucumbers, as a besieged city, except the Lord of hosts had left unto us a very small remnant, we should have been as Sodom, and we should have been like unto Gomorrah. Hear the word of the Lord, ye rulers of Sodom. Give ear unto the law of our God, ye people of Gomorrah. To what purpose is the multitude of your sacrifices? Unto me, seeth the Lord, I am full of the burnt offerings of rams and the fat of fed beasts, and I delight not in the blood of bullocks or of lambs or of the go or of he goats. When ye come to appear before me, who hath required this at your, or at, at, your, at your hand to treat my cause? Bring no more vain oblations. Incense is an abomination unto me. The new moons and sabbaths, the calling of assemblies, I cannot away with. It is iniquity. Even the solemn meetings, your new moons and your appointed feasts, mouth of the Lord has spoken it. This is the voice of the prophet Isaiah. Can you preach more than this? Can your preaching burn with fire like this? But he was a man of unclean lips. So are you now going to be saying you are a minister of the gospel? Humble yourself and get cleansed. This man, see him. Great man, great prophet. See the ways of prophet. But he cried out, I am undone. I do this thing, but I am a man of unclean lips. Because I dwell among a people of unclean lips. I became so loose in my life that every kind of person can come and say anything. I said they took away my commitment. They took away my righteousness. They took away my holiness. It's me, for I am undone. That's the prophet. That's the prophet. That's the prophet. That is the prophet. I don't know your gifts. Put them down and get life. I don't know your calling. Lay it aside. It's not by calling you go to heaven. Get the holy life. I don't know your charity. Put it down and get holiness. You don't go to heaven by charity, but by holiness. Not by anointing, but by holiness. Not by service, but by holiness. Not because of unclean lips. And I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. My eyes have seen the king, the Lord of hosts. But I can't contain. Then the cry of his prophet reached him. The Lord is here today for you. The cry of his prophet reached him. Verse Six. Then flew one of the seraphims unto me, having a live call in his son, which he had taken with the tongues from off the fire, the altar. Or the altar is burning with fire. He used an instrument and took a, a charcoal burning with fire. He took it, an angel. The Lord said to him, he flew to where the prophet was, crying. And verse, verse 7, and he laid it upon my mouth and said, Lord, this has touched their lips. And thine iniquity is taken away. And thy sin punched away. Your sin Pushed away. He was dealing with the tongue, but the tongue has connection with the heart. Actually, what God pushed away was the heart. Iniquity was pushed away. That stubborn heart was pushed away. That backbiting heart was pushed away. That gossiping heart got pushed away. That tough heart, that bitter heart, that angry heart, that heart of envy. God pushed away and the tongue recovered. The tongue was cleansed. The tongue was purified. The tongue was renewed. Everything became clean. Everything became clean. The Lord shall make you clean. The Lord shall purge you. He shall purge you. He shall purge away your tough heart, your bitter heart, 
your angry heart, non-submissive heart. The Lord will punch away that proud heart. The Lord is going to punch it away. That stubborn heart. The Lord is going to punch it away. That heart that wants to devour. That devouring fire. The heart of a lion that wants to tear into pieces. God shall punch it away. God shall punch it away. God shall punch it away. And you shall have a new tongue. You are going to have a new tongue. Your tongue shall change. Your tongue shall change. It shall be sweet tongue. It shall be nice tongue. It shall be godly tongue. It shall be the tongue of kindness. It shall be the tongue of kindness. Rise up upon your feet. And then the Lord shall send you. The Lord said, whom shall I say? He said, here am I. Completely ready for end time walk. The Lord wants to make you ready for end time walk. And therefore he wants to put you woman. You are a wife to a, no, a noble pastor. The Lord wants to use your husband. And then you, you must be made clean, 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 clean for your husband. The Lord wants to give you a husband. A husband that will fear him. A husband that will do his will. He wants to put your life so that there will be no accusation against your family. Accusation against your husband should be grave. Not double tongue. Not slanderous. So open your mouth and say, Lord, put me. Hear them out. Hear them out. Hear them out. Release that heart to God. Hear them out. Release that heart. Confess it. Tell God to change you. Tell God to change you. A new heart will I also give you. A new heart will I also give you. The Lord will give you a new heart. The Lord will give you a new heart. The Lord will give you a new heart. Yeah. So you do a good work. Then the Lord said, Here am I. The Lord said, Who? Who shall I? Whom shall I send? Who shall go for us? And Eli, e, 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 Isaiah said, I'm clean. I will go. Here am I. Send me. Here am I. Send me. No waste of time. In Jesus' name we pray. No waste of time. Be coming forward for this fountain of cleaning is here. Jesus is watching you. Be coming forward. Be coming forward. Bring your heart and your tongue. Bring your heart and your tongue. Bring your heart and your tongue. Bring your heart. Quiet people. Don't, don't stand there as choir. Come for righteousness. Check yourself. Clean yourself. Bring your heart and your tongue. Bring your heart and your tongue. Bring your heart and your tongue. Cry to God. Let him put you now. Let the blood of Jesus be coming down now. Let the blood of Jesus be watching you now. Let the blood of Jesus be watching you now. Be cleaning you now. Be cleaning you now. Be cleaning you now. Submit your heart. Submit your heart. Submit your heart. Submit your heart. Let the Lord punch you. 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 And make you noble, a noble wife, noble wife for the for the for the end time ministry, a noble woman that is also going to give you ministry in this end time. Call upon the Lord. Call upon the Lord. Here am I. Here am I. I am a woman. I am a woman. I am a woman. I am a woman of a corrupt tongue, corrupt lips, corrupt heart, corrupt lips, corrupt heart. yourself clean yourself clean your heart give that heart to jesus give the heart to jesus let him cleanse you let him cleanse you let him cleanse you let him cleanse your heart let him cleanse your heart let him cleanse your heart and give you a new tongue a tongue that will speak right right things right things don't pull down his church don't pull down his church but don't be a gossiper in the church of Christ. Backbiter in the church of Christ. A lioness in the assembly of God. Some years ago, 
I gave my life to Jesus. Jesus took me and washed my sins away. And then he gave me the power to live for him. My life has changed. Now I am happy, happy. I came to Jesus. He washed me and forgave me. I now I know I live my life for him. Come to Jesus, he'll wash you and forgive you. And then you know you live your life for him. Sin is killing, my friend, do you know that? I came to tell you because I love you. Come to Jesus or else you will perish. Time is dying or oh, you may be too late, too late. I came to Jesus, he washed me and forgave me. And now I know I live my life for him. Come to Jesus, he'll wash you and forgive you. And then you know you live your life for him. You are here now. God brought you to pray more. God will teach you his word of true holiness. He will give you the knowledge of his word. Your life will change. You will be happy and fruitful. Came to Jesus. He washed me and forgave me. And now I know I live my life for him. You come to Jesus. He'll wash you and forgive you. And then you know you live your life for him. I came to Jesus. He washed me and forgave me. And now I know I live my life for him. Come to Jesus, he'll wash you and forgive you. And then you know, you live your life for him. In Jesus' name, we pray. Say this after me, Lord Jesus. I am sorry for misusing my tongue. My God. I commit myself to you. Every area of filthiness, every area of defilement in my tongue, in my heart, purge it in Jesus' name. Purge me in Jesus' name. Now, pray that way, pray that way, pray that way. Quickly pray. Call upon Jesus. Call upon Jesus. Call upon him. Let him perfect you. Let him sanctify you. Are you born again? You need sanctification. Ask him for sanctification. Ask him for sanctification. The Lord sanctify you holy. The Lord sanctify you holy. The Lord sanctify you holy. The Lord sanctify his children. His daughter. His children. The Lord sanctify you holy. Come to Jesus. He'll wash you and forgive you. And then you know you live your life for him. I came to Jesus. He washed me and forgave me. And now I know I live my life for him. Say so you come to Jesus. He'll wash you and forgive you. And then you know you live your life for him. Some years ago, I gave my life to Jesus. Jesus took me and washed my sins away. And then he gave me the power to live for him. My love has changed. Now I am happy and happy. I came to Jesus. He washed me and forgave me. And now I know I live my life for him. Come to Jesus. He'll wash you and forgive you. And then you know you live your life for him. In Jesus' 
name we pray. Receive salvation. Receive the holiness of God. Receive sanctification. Oh Lord, do it in their life in Jesus' name. The power of God is going with you all through this program. Newness. New life. New heart. New tongue. Love. Peace. Righteousness. Receive it in Jesus' name. You are the woman. A new pair of shoes have been put on your leg. You are the woman. You are the woman. You are the woman. Go in peace. Bye bye. The Lord be with you. Eat your food in peace. Transformation has taken place. You will do it later. Other people shall see it. Divine favor shall follow you. The, more, the Lord has given you a new tongue. The Lord has given you a new heart. Be happy. Your husband will be happy with you. Your children will bless you. The church will... Hallelujah. I came to Jesus. He washed me and forgave me. Be washed. Be singing. And now I know I live my life for him. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. He'll wash you and forgive you. And then you know you live your life. Some years ago, some years ago. But you, it's now you did. Jesus took you. And then he gave you. Your life has changed. I came to Jesus. Oh, yes. I came to Jesus. Oh, yes. I say, I came to Jesus. He has forgiven you. Don't go and do those things again. Yes. We're going to get ready for the meal. Remember the time to be here. Wonderful. Tomorrow, 6.30 to 7.50. Before 6.30, you are here praying. 6.30, the coordinator, the moderator rather, will take over prayer. And we're going to listen to a wonderful testimony tomorrow. Amen. Hallelujah. Wonderful. If you have any wonderful testimony, please. Pass through your leader and I want to see it. Because we shall have testimonies of God's salvation and holiness. Testimonies of God's healing and deliverance. Testimonies of marriage and ministry. If you have any such, we want to give you opportunity. God bless you.